Okay. Hey, Rob Fox, how are you doing tonight? Melinda. Welcome in. How you doing, Rob Fox? Was it a good devotional? Sorry, I'm here. <laughs> I got to switch my laundry here in a minute, too. Sorry. <laughs> That's quite all right. Hey, my, my I have a day off this week. You want a day off? It's my only day off. It's the only one I got. Do you have any? There we go. All right. We have Rob Fox. We have uh, Melinda. We have Alan Dittmeyer. Alan Dittmeyer, he does good work for the veterans. He holds a uh, catfishing tournament every year for the veterans. So everybody, tonight we're going to be praying for everyone's needs. And if everyone has any needs that uh, comes in, they can mention them out. We'll pray, uh, make a prayer list or we'll pray for them. And we'll keep praying and sharing God's word and praising God in all things. Sorry, I'm just now getting shared out too. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, I'm behind today. Hey, not as behind as your brother. <laughs> it's true. I sent you both a link at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bill Reddick, how are you doing tonight? <sighs> You're welcome, Alan. Glad to hear that you hit your goal for this year's event. That is awesome. It's amazing because you guys do a lot for the veterans. You guys work year year round for one. You work all year for one tournament. Then as soon as that tournament's over, you start working for the next one. That that takes a lot. That takes a lot. 
And Alan, I will be getting that package out to you too for the Veterans Tournament. What kind of tournament is it? It's a uh, Veterans Catfishing Tournament. Catfishing, okay. The, Nothing uh, I got that will help. Huh? All, all the stuff I have is bass fishing. Hey, Stuart. It's it's a tournament where they raise funds for uh, the veterans. That's and they get veterans out on boats for free to uh, go fishing with other fishermen. Yeah, like he says, it takes a lot of support from all our uh, sponsors. And they're always looking for sponsors. Yeah, he's take. He, he says they take sponsors of all kinds. So I make bass fishing gear. Um, I'll grab some stuff to show you what I got. I haven't been selling it in a while, so I might as well just give it away. It's just sitting in boxes. Because <laughs> you know some bass fishermen catch bass to use for bait. <laughs> Pretty sure that's illegal. <laughs> Not in some states. Use a game fish for some oh, guess who's here? Our brother. There he is. Sleeping What's going on there, man. I follow one of JV's rules, take a nap. <laughs> yeah. I actually didn't do it today. <laughs> Just JB, going and going. Hey, retired Rick. JV Allen says we could put you on as a sponsor if you like. Uh, just say I'll grab his. Like, <clears throat> if you want, I send you his link in Messenger. Hey, kill um, Palmetto Cats. I do have a praise report that I shared with JV before. I was going to say, tell Eric the good news. I'll go get my stuff. I do have a praise report for everybody. And this is one that you can take off your prayer lists. River Rat Tammy is cancer free. <laughs> we just prayed for them today, man, on Bible study. I, I mean, every time I pray, I pray for her and I pray for a lot of people and she came into my live last friday when i was fishing and gave that report it just got me so joyful it was amazing hey amen brother that's just another reason for us to say thank you lord man but you there know, is one we do need to add to our uh prayer list yes sir double, double hook angling dave yeah, yeah. I got him down. He's, he's had a heart attack. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I saw it um, today. I think it was before I went to church. And when I went live, when we went live today, uh, I I couldn't think of the channel name. And thank God for Dominic Hollis, man, being there. And he, he gave me the uh, the YouTube name. But I, just, I, I did see that. And I, I will be praying, you know. Uh, but, but if you, you have any more, man, let me know. We'll definitely add to the list, man, because right. hey, we have prayer worries. Like tonight, the show is about praying for everybody's needs. And if we have a word, we'll share it out. If we have, if you have something to praise God for, please let us know, and we'll share that out as well. But tonight's show is all about praying for you, each other and one another. So if you have anything, please let us know. And there's another brother in Christ, Palmetto Cats. In, in the, yes, sir. Yeah. And we have a channel member in here, River, uh, retired Rick. And oh, uh, Catfish Dog Tim. We need to put him and his family in uh, the prayer list because they they had a loss. Yeah. 
<laughs> Just a second. Still getting stuff. Melinda, how is uh, you and your husband doing with your uh, healings? I don't know if River at Tammy has a, a Bible or not. If not, we definitely know the guy to go go talk to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We know the guy to go talk to if she needs a Bible, man. You know? Oh, yeah. I'll gladly send her a Bible. I know you will. I know JB will <laughs> in a heartbeat. Will. What's in that Bible? It's, uh, I, I just believe it's, it's the motion that you're willing to take to help someone's out. You know, I just think after I really do, man, we need that. We don't need to be hesitating on any process of no. trying to get someone closer to Christ, man. You know, plant the seed and let God do the rest. Let God do the rest. Alan says his small town just had a tornado rip through and devastated the town. This was Thursday night. Town of Selma and Winchester in Indiana. Thankfully, no one was killed. Wow. Let's pray for that. Those two towns, Selma and Winchester. Melinda says he got uh, he got his tooth pulled, and now waiting for heart procedures. And now she has a bad tooth. <laughs> All right, hey, so. If you want the stuff, I got stuff I'll donate for prizes and stuff. Um, these yeah, here, but, uh, oh, all right. These here are my JV Pike and Musky lures. <laughs> oh, nice. I got five different. We got the pike, we got the creek chub, we got the trout, we got the musky, and we got the bright perch color. And so there's five of those. <laughs> and then I got the JV square bills. And that's called that's the chunky Charlie. My pink and white. I like the scriptures on the back. Yeah. Um, that one's a Buddhalish. That one's more like a silver shad. And uh, this is the jiggling JV because JV jiggles. <laughs> <laughs> don't you, hey, don't you have the bubbling duck? <laughs> no, that I need to make that lure. Make a topwater duck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm re referring to, right? Yeah, the video I just put out today. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, then these are the JV uh, jigs. If I can get them open. They come in five colors. We got the black and blue, tried and true. We got the watermelon, pumpkin seed, uh, chartreuse. This one was just a little different. I decided to go with the purple and gold. I don't even know why, but it works. And then the red and black. And that's my swim, my jigs. And then they got a swim jig head on them. Yeah. Now, do you have scriptures, different scriptures on the back of each one of them? No, they're all Genesis 9-3. Okay. Because that's my logo, is Genesis 9-3. That's cool. Um, and then I got my froggies. <laughs> <laughs> froggies? These are the JV Topwater Frogs. Um, this one's kind of a brown, black, and yellow. And they come in these little packages with the 
JV Outdoors, JV Frogs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's got all the info on the back of them. But yeah, I... Squishy, the top water. Um, so I got the, that one, and then I got a, like a bright green with a yellow. And then I got more of like a normal colored froggy. This one's kind of a bright green. And then I got a pink and gray. Poor frog. Hit the spray can. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Alan, if you want, I will ship you two sets of each one of these for giveaways. Plus, hey, nephew, awesome. Welcome, in. I'll send you uh, two sets of each one of those sets of lures plus uh, two JV hats if you would like. Wow. What a blessing. Um, just uh, if you want them, just let Avid know and uh, Avid can give me the address and I'll get them shipped out. I can, I, can get, I, put, I can put you in touch with him on Messenger. Okay. Send his link to you. And you guys can talk. Because I'm going to be sending them four shirts and two of those uh, Bluetooth mugs. Nice. Hey, nephew, how's your daughter, baby doing? Yes, I still have you on my prayer list there. You can take it off my ugly mug now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we liked it up there. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get us started and get us prayed in. Would you like to do the honors, Eric? Oh, sure. Give me, give me thirty seconds, man. Um, no problem. You're good. Oh, Palmetto wants to see this mug. Yeah, let's see Eric's mug. Look at that. <laughs> Oh man, y'all! I gotta get you back on this one. Hey, you gotta get Palmetto back. He has to see that. No, screenshot oh, it. Screenshot it. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin. Hey, Baba. Welcome in, Baba. Baba. Man, but uh, if y'all ready, I'm ready, hey. man. I just wanted to write down some more names on the prayer list. No that, problem. Uh, uh, thanks. Tom says, I love Eric's smile. Appreciate he it, does man. have a he has a pretty smile. <laughs> he does. I'm gonna get a picture of him and get some hearts around his cheeks. <laughs> there we go. All right, there, there, there you go, Kevin. Hey, don't get the two children, one on each shoulder. <laughs> I tell you, I love y'all, brothers and sisters, man. I, I tell you, it's been a these YouTube years, man, has been very, you know, great for me. Uh, meeting new people, man, learning new things, and uh, not only about fishing, but by Christ and and different things, man. It's just been a, a blessing for me. So I just say thank you. But uh, if we're ready, I, I, I'll be more than happy to pray us in, man. Let's get it going. Let's get it started. Let's do it. Let Jesus right, rock uh, this joint. Awesome. Oh, wise and oh, Heavenly Father, God, we'll come to you, giving you uh, all the praise and all the glory, God. We thank you, God, for another opportunity that us brothers are able to join together and, and sisters, are in, you know, to, to, to join together, God, and to continue to, to not be ashamed of you, God, but to pray unto you, God, and, and to lift your holy name up, God. I thank you for this opportunity again. God, you continue to work through us. God, continue to use us. God, continue to to to, uh, to be the head of our life. God, we say thank you for that. God, continue to 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 to, to make us who you want us to be. God, and most of all, God, we want to say thank you, Lord, for your only begotten Son dying on the cross for all of our sins. God, and we 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 are so grateful to 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 know this and to believe in this with all of our heart. God. And, and confess with our mouths, God, that on the third day, God, that you, your son, rose again, God. And we just say thank you for that opportunity to, to know this information. 
God, we want to just say, God, thank you for tonight, God. And I pray that anyone that is uh, uh, not fully sure of, of who to serve and, and, and what to do, God, I pray that tonight, God, they come in, God, and, and they ask questions and they continue to, to, to draw closer unto you to be ready whenever you may call them home, God. We love you, God. We appreciate you, God. And everybody that's on the prayer list now, God, we ask you to continue to go by their beds, God. Go by their homes. Go by the hospitals, God. If they if they incarcerated, go by the the, the uh, jail cell, Lord. Let them feel your head. Let them feel your presence, God. Lord, we say thank you for this opportunity, God, to know you and know what you're about. In Jesus' name, we seal this prayer. Amen. 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 Hey, Amen. And uh, where's nephew? I saw you say something. Where did I? Where did go? Where did it go? I saw him say. He's doing okay. Appointment tomorrow. She's doing okay. Appointment. Tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Praise and you know what? I want to do just a thank you prayer right away. A go praise to God prayer. Let's just do it right now because I'm so happy. I'm in a good mood today. Life is good. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to I want to thank you. Thank, thank you, you for all the blessings that you give each and every one of us, from the friends we get to have, to the family, to be able to join together and commune and grow stronger in you, Lord. And uh, I want to thank you. For the cancer freeness of Tammy from River Rapids. Yes, Lord. Thank you. We know it was you. Yes, Lord. We know it was you. We prayed and we asked for your healing hands, and you yes, did exactly what you said you would do. Thank you. Lord. You said you have not because you asked not. And we Lord, you're so good. And I want to thank you for Austin's daughter. She's doing good. Thank you. Doing good, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You bless us all so much. Help us to never take for granted all the blessings you give each and every one of us. Yes, Jesus. Please, God, just always keep us humble and keep us focused on you. And never let us forget where our blessings come from. In Jesus' name I ask you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Welcome Thank you, Rocky Mountain, my prospecting. What up, Rocky Mountain? Melinda oh, Dobson, oh, Stuart oh. the Fish Whisperer, Baba. Baba. <laughs> ba, 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 this starting out a really good night. Yes, man. Hey, listen, when there's when there's two or more in agreement, it's always got to be in the uh, good oh, night. Yeah. God is in the midst. Plus, we get two praise, get a praise of God on both aspects: the baby being getting the healing and the cancer being removed. Wow. I mean, what else? I mean, <laughs> I can't be more grateful. Tell me, God can't be more answer. grateful because tell me, God to, answer prayers. <laughs> we get to see oh, Jesus' God. powerful blood of healing going being going down on people and healing them. Sorry, leave the singing to her. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> I mean, you get to see God's hands in people's lives, healing them, leading them, guiding them, bringing people. To where they need to be. Oh Lord! What up, Mike Sampson? Hey, Sampy, how you doing, brother? How we doing? Now, how we doing? Sampy's eyes. He's had surgery for cataracts, and now he has new sight. Nice. So. More <laughs> blessings! More blessings! More blessings! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, how much more you want? Mike Sampson just added you as a follower, sir. 
I want to Philippians 4 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, with let thanksgiving. your requests be made known unto God. Amen. Amen. With all, all, not some. Oh, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Be thankful. I am every day. I'm thankful for everything. Amen. Amen. Be thankful Ooh. for the sun, the painted skies, the painted night skies he makes, the birds, the fowls, the fish, the water, everything he does for us. Amen. He gives us all this beautiful scene outside. And we take it for granted instead of thanking him for it. Yes, sir. Yeah, buddy. Mike Sampson, I just added you. Uh, Hook said you and Stuart Defense Whisperer just Hook said you also, brother. So and you got a new follower there, brother. We had, hey, we have the best alarm clock every day. Yes. We have the best and truest alarm clock every day. Yeah. And the Lord Jesus yeah. wakes us up. Every day, every day. I, I got what? Hey, what better grace can you get than that? Going up backwards. Back hey, backwards, barbarian. We should get backwards. What are you doing? You want to come up here? Yeah, buddy. That is a oh, brother man. in Christ right there. I'll tell you that much. Yes, he is. Backwards, if you want to come up here, I'll, I'll drop the link so we can get you up here. He might or be. Or he's he's one the of them link. Canadians. They keep weird time up there. <laughs> <laughs> but he is. A, he is, Yeah. And he lives like far east. Like he's past Eastern time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> at least he, he, he lives over, over in Eric's neck of the wood. Yeah, he's pretty much in Russia. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I'll be right back. I need more coffee. He's on the cell phone. Give him a few minutes to go to his PC. Awesome. Uh, yes, sir, man. Evan, how you been doing, brother? I've been doing good. I did the catch and cook today. The I walleye, mean, the flathead, and the channel mm -hmm. cat. Wow. What did you use to catch them? Uh, I used uh, I used some bluegills for a flathead. I used a uh, cut shad for the channel cat and I was jigging for crappie when I caught the walleye. Wow, wow, awesome man. Yeah, that's yeah, just a, a, a walleye hit a 130 seconds ounce jig. A tiny tiny jig. Wow. In a twenty a 32 pound walleye hit that thing. <laughs> a six pound test. That's that's just shocking to hear that that small and and they tore it up like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alan wants to know what uh, city and state we're in. Uh, I'm in Belleville, Illinois, across from St. Louis, Missouri. Nah, I'm in South Carolina, man. And uh, my brother's in South Dakota. All different, but God we're sees different, the world. We're on three different locations. Yes. And the biggest part about it is they guys still join us together to talk. That's what I told a lot of people, man. Um, at my new position, I'm able to uh, uh, talk about Christ every day now, man. And uh, it's a blessing that I get to do that because it's in, in, in schools, you know, you're not able to do that process. You have to be. Uh, only so much you can say, and now that this position has opened up for me, man, it's just every day I look forward to going to just talk to our youth, middle schoolers, high schoolers, and uh, about Christ, man, and how can we get them closer to uh, uh, saying yes, being saved, yeah. going, finding them a church home, finding them a yeah. church home to... Uh, um, to, to, to just grow up in, man, you know. But it's just amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Now, Eric, you did hear about Big Mike's wife, Misty, right? Uh, 
No, what happened? Well, I, a, I heard about the about a had foot. Had a blood clot in the le uh, leg, and her foot died, so they had to amputate her. Yes, I did hear about that. Yes, sir. And oh, it's misty, she, right? Yeah, that's yeah. misty, and yeah. she still has uh, problems with the foot. Yeah. What wow. state and city are you three located? I live in Centerville, South Dakota. Don't look it up on the map. You won't find it. No. It's a, it's here, a and that's why I live here. It's a tiny, <laughs> tiny town. I literally, a cornfield's two blocks away from me. Yes, well, not even two blocks. No more, more than what? Whatever. Is it a stone yes. throw away? Well, I could probably throw a stone there. I probably could. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, my neighbor is a cornfield. I got one guy who lives behind me with a crazy wife, and then there's a street, and then there's one row of houses, and then a cornfield. I, hey, I got six. I got three acres of woods behind me. <laughs> I want to move out of the country so bad. And I think about it all the time. So if I could find the perfect then, place out in the country, I would just be out of here. Have yeah, you look like Noah from the Ark? <laughs> <laughs> hey, back in the day, they had big beards. Back old in the Bible days, they had built him. Beard. He built him an Arky, Arky, old Noah. <laughs> he built him. I wish yeah. they would bring. Um, I wish they would, Miss um, Dobson, bring back the prayers and you know things that we need. I broke that uh, down in uh, Bibles. I think that was like three years ago. I broke that down. Of uh, when our country's like averages skyrocketed was shortly after we took prayer out of school. Yep, yeah. that was in. I believe was, 80, no, no 92. It was, that. it was earlier than that. What? I, I have the notes on it. Yeah, I want to say it was late. It, it might have been, um, let's see. But might have been, it was in the you look from there, I, we I were in school when it would happen. For generations, we were in uh, a standstill. And uh, like our national averages for crime, for uh, divorces, for pregnancy out of marriage, it was at a standstill, like for generations. Soon as we took prayer out of school, all that stuff, crime, divorce, pregnancy outside of marriage, all that stuff, within the next few years, climbed up by like 53%, 53 mm -hmm. or 57%. Within just a few years of taking prayer out of school, and it's never gotten better since. <laughs> it just keeps getting higher and higher and higher. I want to say it was the late seventies too, Melinda. I am so sure it was. I, I think it was, uh, it was late seventies. I think it was seventy-eight to eighty-two when that happened. But I opened up my Bible uh, app and it gave me the verse for the night. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith, but after that faith is come. Yes, sir. Galatians three twenty four through twenty five. Our backwards. Hey, backwards. Ah. Uh. Yes, through faith we are justified and sanctified. It's <laughs> um, another good prayer one. It said it was 1962. See, boy, that was even earlier than I said. Well, it was way earlier than I thought. But I, I just remember I think a lot of the states fought it until the late. 70s though because i'm pretty sure a lot of the southern states were not following it no because we definitely were because when i was in my element school we would feel you know you know um, um american and then then after that we always had that our teacher you know whisper us a prayer over that over today and i was like wow 
1962. Yeah, I'm going to say we... We still had... I got the notes for it written down somewhere, and I'm trying to remember which Bible study I did it in. That's Nehemiah. When they, now, now that's that's crazy. They they don't do do that anymore. I need to ask my daughter. Do they do that? Do they still do the pledge of allegiance? Yeah, they took the God oh, part out. Um, I got somebody's name that is Richard written down in my oh, notebook, and I got their phone number, and I have no idea who oh, this wow. Richard is. He's got a beard now. <laughs> oh, Daniel? Daniel's got a, always got a beard. Holy buckets. Yes, sir. What's up, buddy? Like Grandpa Daniel over there now. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm trying to get my along. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but hey. I want y'all to pass it to me. At least I got a bearded hey, brother up here. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you doing, brother? Good. Tonight is a night of prayer, so that's what we're going to do is just prayer, praise, and pray for one another as they give us a prayer request. And if you have a Bible verse, feel free to share it. Or if you just have a witness to tell us. Uh, not a Bible verse, but I just actually finished Bible study not too long ago. That's cool. Um, one thing that I like, I like to look into a little, like, the little nitty gritty information inside of uh, different parts of the scripture and try Good to piece the big picture together. Um, who is it in Mark? I'll talk about that for a quick second if you want. Go for it. Whatever you want to share. Yeah, so in Mark uh, 5, when Jesus heals a demon-possessed man, so Jesus was just after, he was after uh, crossing the lake, and he ended up in the region of, uh, how do you say that? G-E-R-A-S-E-N-E-S. Would you say, Repeat that again. The region of Gersenes, Gersenes. Yeah. Wherever, anyways, Jesus, when he crossed the lake, after he calmed the storm. <clears throat> He ended up in uh, in that place. So I start. I I learned about the region. I went on and started learning about the region. Um, when they had the guy come out of the tomb and he was um, howling and cutting himself and everything else, and Jesus went and spoke to him, and the demon said that they were, you know, their name was Legion and so on and so forth. Um, he cast them into the pigs. Yep. So that whole thing was is kind of fascinating because that area. It were Gentiles. They weren't Jews. That's why there was pigs. There was a huge herd of pigs because they, the Jews didn't eat pigs, and the Gentiles did. Yep. And there were 2,000 pigs that after he put the demons, he, he gave the permission for the demons to go into the pigs. The demons jumped off the cliff. The pigs jumped off the cliff, and they died, right, in the water. Um, that's That guy that he healed, and everybody who's seen that happen, that got people talking. So that actually what ended up happening was uh, a lot of people witnessed the pigs jumping in the water. They witnessed the man who was healed. Um, and the, that man went to 10 different towns, which were most likely Gentile towns because he was a Gentile. And he proclaimed what he did what he, or what he seen and how he was healed and how merciful God was. And then that kind of set the scene. So people were long before Jesus sat down with the Gentiles and did the sermons where he also shared the fish and the bread with this, with the, uh, with the Gentiles, they knew about him because they heard all these stories. And that's one of the stories they heard. So it kind of set the stage. It's not like a whole, but like they were like, wow, that, that guy who cast out demons, that guy who, you know, all the, into the pigs and the pigs, they were like, he's, he's going to be having a sermon. He's going to be talking. So it kind of set the scene. So, so yeah, like it's, it's very pertinent that it was Gentiles that this happened, that it happened to, because it allowed them, you know, to teach it into, into with, with the Gentiles, not just the Jews. Amen. Actually, yeah, that's pretty important because the slow change from uh, Jew to Gentile in the New Testament is 
it's it's something to be witnessed. Like if you really study it and the yeah. change that happened. I mean, it's been happening forever. Like we're studying Daniel right now, and people don't realize that in the Old Testament, the Gentile king of the world wrote a chapter in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And people don't realize. I'm like, you have no idea how significant that is that in the Jewish Torah, there is a chapter written by a Gentile king. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, because they were really, especially from the from the Pharisees' position, they were uh, Gentiles were really looked down upon. Exactly, we were garbage. Well, I am not finding. Hey, one Chris Hopper, welcome in. That's one thing that we need to pray about these schools because these schools are taking a lot of things away from Christians and putting it more towards the LGBTQ. Oh, LGT, whatever you call it. How do we learn that? Alphabet soup. I will not <laughs> bow to your gods. That's one thing we preach today. Amen. I just found my Easter sermon. Well, I, I mentioned this to my wife earlier. I said, the a lot of churches, unfortunately, today are guilty of idolatry because they oh, have yeah. a version of Jesus. They're not following Jesus of the Bible. They're not learning Jesus' character. They're not learning who he was. Instead, they're coming with this, like, feminist, very timid version of Jesus. And that's who they're they're preaching. That's who they're they're trying to propagate. And it's it's not Jesus. It, that's So that's idolatry. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, we talk bad about the Catholics because they obviously, you know, they got statues everywhere. And they got saints of this and saints of that. And I can take you to each one of their saints and lead it back to its pagan god that it originated from. Mm-hmm. Right. But, yeah, the Protestant churches are just as guilty. Oh. <laughs> it's the same thing. The I, was reading, themselves. I was reading something on uh, Facebook today that someone posted. There was Buddha. There was uh, Allah. There was all these other false gods. But there is only one empty tomb. One empty tomb. Exactly. They all died. They all died, but there's only one that conquered death. And it was Jesus. So there's only one way unto God. And there's only one God that died for you. The rest of them, you have to do something for them. Yep. (laughs) Wow. Jesus was one of three people. One of three. That's that's it. one of three things that Jesus or people Jesus could have been, either a liar, a fool, or the Messiah. That's it. Exactly. There's no other exactly. option. And by the eyewitnesses, he obviously wasn't a liar because he did all these miracles. People saw him. Thousands no, of exactly. people witnessed it. But like that's the that's the options we're faced with when you're reading scripture. And you're reading uh, history and you're looking into it. That's the only three options you have. Was he lying? Was he a fool? Or was he the Messiah? But he's definitely the Messiah. Because if you look at, um, I was actually reading a thing a while ago about, they said, if you, if if someone was born between 2,000 years ago and today, and they were born and they fulfilled six of the Old Testament prophecies, if they fulfilled six, the I, the they said just to put it in a visual perspective of, of how rare that would be. They said, imagine if you have dollar coins, just normal dollar coins spread out along the ground of the entire state of Texas, and then you get in a plane, and one of those coins is marked winner. You get in a plane, you fly over straight across Texas, and you jump out at any given time, and you land on the ground, and you pick up a coin, and you get that one coin. That's the probability of of you you uh, fulfilling six prophecies, and Jesus filled over three hundred. Three hundred and twenty-four. It's impossible yep. for him not to be the Messiah. <laughs> wow. Mathematically, everything that the Old Testament concealed, when Jesus came into ministry, he revealed it. 
Yeah. Hey, Jax. He revealed everything, all those prophecies from the Old Testament. He brought the light in the New Testament. Yeah, 324. Yeah. That's why when we go through the Old Testament, every time there's a prophecy made or something like, like we said, we're going through Daniel today. That whole fire pit scene Boy. is such a representation Boy. of Jesus. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. He's like, because what does it do? Each, um, you stand for God. You have faith in God. How do you get saved? You have faith in Jesus. What did they do? They declared their faith. The world tried to cast them in. Who saved them? Jesus released them from their binds, made sure the pits of fire could not hurt them, and saved them from it. What does he do like, for every uh, one of us? Yeah, we believe by faith, mm -hmm. and he takes away our bonds of sin, and we are no longer able to be hurt by hell's fire. He's like, we're going through uh, the whole Job fire right pit now. scene is such a vision of Jesus. I hardly ever hear anybody preach on that. <laughs> I truly believe that, man. That if we can just see. When I say see, I'm talking about really see what God has taken you from. Uh, I, I believe that that's that, that's a blessing stored upon you. And I believe that it's something that you should be very thankful for. Uh, you know, because yeah. of that, that chain that you was hooked to, or, you know, when I say chain, that could be um, drugs. It could be, you know, uh, pornography, it could be anything, and God has released you from that. You know, I think that that is a blessing, man. You know, I, know. He's I will say this things from me. I will say this before I was saved as in the cigarettes, alcohol, pornography, drugs, and very much womanizer, and now. I'm happy with where I'm at. You hey, look at women differently. Clean me up. That is one hundred percent true. Looking at women differently. Yeah. I look at a woman now. If I if I if I see a woman who's, you know, dress revealing and stuff, instead of being in my head, I'm going, oh yeah, you know, you know like mm -hmm. you used to. I I'm go like, put some clothes. That's that's his daughter. <laughs> that's his daughter. Yeah. yeah. You know. Now you have no. Nowadays you look at these women. Through, through the Holy Ghost and through Jesus, the way he wants you to look at him. Yeah, yeah, probably the same way Jesus looks at him. He's like, what are you doing to yourself? Put some clothes on. Mm -hmm. Have some respect for yourself. Don't be dressing yeah. like trashy. But now, nowadays, you get. I'm seeing a transition from a saved girl and a Christian girl stepping into modesty, which is really showing them that they're getting convicted for what Jesus wants, oh, yeah. he just wants him to dress. That is that is actually a trend I have seen. Um, because even in hospitals, you can tell the girls that are truly saved. Yeah, the girls that ain't, they got their V cut scrubs on, the cleavage is showing, blah blah blah. A lot of these girls that uh, I can tell when they're saved, they'll have the long scrub dress on. Melinda undershirt underneath their scrubs and they got their hair, you know. And I can just I'm like that that girl right there believes in Christ. Melinda, <laughs> you belong in here. Don't even talk like that, Melinda. You belong in here. I, I, I just want to know why would she even type that? I mean, because I mean Jax is uh, here. Jax yeah. is a girl, by the way. Just because she has the yeah. name Jax doesn't mean she's we have Jax. She's a good singer too. So Jax, if you want to come up, you know, you know, yeah, if you're just, fill our ears with some magnificent voice, you know. Hey, <laughs> just so everyone knows, I'm actually I'm commenting on the YouTube tab, so I'm showing up as Backwoods Barbarian in the chat. But I'm Daniel here, just so everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. Which Melinda, one? don't even say that. You know you belong in here. Yeah, man. You wouldn't even be here, you know. You wouldn't. Ba here. Ba's a girl too. Yeah. At least I hope so. We have several women in here. We have a few words. Wendy uh, <laughs> is watching next to. We have uh, Wendy in here that's in here with a steward. So she's just quiet, but she's in here. 
So you, you're you're good in here, Melinda. Amen. I, it, it's 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 just a great, um, it's a great place to be. It's hey. only going to be talked about the truth. Like, uh, let's see, let me go. Over. Corinthians one four. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. Can't get any better than that. <laughs> no. He, he gives us grace daily. He needs to give me grace daily. He's <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, Daniel, <laughs> if you haven't heard, River Rat Tammy. Oh, my gosh. That, that was such a good day. I was already having a good day, and then you made my day even better when I heard that. River Rat Tammy is cancer-free. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes, we've been praying for her, and bam, cancer. Now, nephew Austin's awesome. daughter from uh, has gone from having water on her lungs and a bad heart, and is getting she, healed and has a doctor's appointment next week. And, and she's only five months old. Boy, I prayed hard for that little girl. I'll tell you what. I, that, I, that was one I prayed hard, hard, hard for. I still pray hard for that little girl. God's pulling That little through. girl is being touched by God, by Jesus, personally. Wow. Yeah. Jack, you want to come up and pickle our, our ears with the praise music? You're more than welcome to. Oh, Jax, you want to sing to I am. Uh, I was at a friend's house uh, yesterday. Um from church actually and we went there she had some of her extended family there and it basically it ended up turning into a bit of a bible study and her son he's on the fence he his his wife goes to church their children go to church or he stays at home every sunday mm. he's very he's on the fence because he's he's one of those people where like you know if if He's throwing the baby out with the bathwater because he's looking at the different denominations and right. he's seeing how they're behaving and they contradict each other and you Catholics and Protestants and so on. So and he, and he can't come to terms with that. And I said to him, "It's like, well, you know, if you if 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 you go around the piano and you play pe Beethoven horribly, do I blame Beethoven, or am I going to blame you?" Exactly. I was like, "That's the problem with a lot of the churches." I said, "And here's what I've noticed." Um, as someone who's been on the outside for such a long time and coming inside, I said, the issue with a lot of the churches, it's the same as you have five different guys trying to put together a piece of Ikea furniture and nobody looks at the user manual. The user manual is right here. If everyone went to it, they'd be all on the same page. But you got five right. different people trying to figure it out on their own instead of going right back to the user manual and putting it together the way it was designed. And that's the, one of the biggest issues that pushes people away from defining communion in church is because they see, they almost like they have to choose which which flavor of church do I go to, well, you know. Me. And then you got people like then you got people like Mormons who are, I mean, they're 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 trying to make a, a couch out of a bed, like piece of you know a bed <laughs> from IKEA. They're they're just out there doing their own thing, but. <laughs> <sighs> They're crazier than the Jehovah Witnesses. I'll tell you that much when you get into it. Like <laughs> but my biggest like thing that I tell people is uh Thanks, buddy. I like you too. When uh people are like, well, I don't like you know Christianity because these people all they do is gossip. And I said that's why God didn't put them on the cross. Well, this yeah. path where he did that, well, that's why God didn't put that pastor on the cross. Christianity yeah. has nothing to do with them. No. Christianity is Christ. There's a reason why Christ was put on the cross for you. Yeah. The rest of us yeah. are human. I yeah. I try my hardest to be the kindest to everybody in this world, but have I ever done anybody wrong in my life? You bet I have. Even if I, I didn't to. mean to, I have. <laughs> <laughs> because I am not perfect. Christ was. Christ, Christ took 
is perfect in all ways. That's right, why so on the our punishments on him that we should have taken. Yeah. We should have, we should have taken those beatings. We should have taken those thrashings. We should have taken that. We should have taken a lot worse. And if you really just sit back and think about what Jesus did and do it for us, shouldn't that be enough for us to even instead of physical pain? We oh. I don't think we will ever completely understand what Jesus did for us. No the physical yeah. plant, he did that just so we could understand that. We can understand physical pain. When he gets whipped, he gets beaten, he gets nails in his hands and feet and put up on the crowd we can understand pain we all had know what pain feels like right then he gets stabbed between the ribs by a spear but what happens spiritually to jesus that day we will i don't think we will ever understand you got to remember I, jesus has no beginning has no ending he st- sits up there in heaven along with the father and the holy spirit they are all one god equal to each other at all times they had never been separated before until Jesus came to this planet. When you read the Bible and you read it thoroughly, every time Jesus talks about God, he calls him Father. Mm-hmm. Every yeah. time, except for one time. I tell you what. When he's on the cross, he says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I, I've tried. The only time they had been separated because Jesus took our sins at that very second, and God had the Father had to separate Himself from the Son he, because he God the Father face. cannot coexist with sin. Yeah, mm-hmm. and what he that turned did, his face from him. What that did spiritually to Jesus, I, I said, I don't think we'll ever understand what happened that day. Is so big, way beyond the physical part. Way beyond the. Linda, the only thing that matters in here is you believe on in Jesus Christ, and He's the Lord of your life. And we're here to pray for you. Don't worry, I'm an independent Baptist. That's what I used to be pastor of. My plaque is still up there. My ordained ministry plaque. I'm not denying. Stewart. What? Stewart. Uh, no, Stewart said he's a Catholic. I, I just noticed that. Um, I don't. I don't bash Catholics who follow Christ. I, I personally, I have an issue with the Catholicism and their teachings yeah, that exactly. aren't biblical. Oh, yeah, I know. That's I it. know many good Catholics who love Jesus. Yes. Well, I thought the hierarchy. Just go look at the throne of the Pope. What does that have to yeah. do with Jesus? <laughs> Like it, it, in my in my opinion, and I could be wrong on this, but I think if the pope if the pope was truly biblical, the throne he sits on should be made of nothing but something like wood, because Christ Himself was a carpenter. Exactly. He should be sitting on a wooden chair that's probably not the most comfortable. <laughs> not hand bringing souls to hell. <laughs> yes. That's what his throne looks like. <laughs> Everybody here, I'm, I'm, I, I, you have children, uh, avid. No, no children, Eric. You have children. Well, you can you can imagine. I'm sure because you are a child. So, I I wrote this down the other day. I just thought it was a little thought provoking, but I said it just puts it in perspective. Would like would you take a bullet for your child? Oh yeah, no shit, no doubt. There's there's I no no doubt. On that. Child. Right. So, I may not be a father, but. I'm the type of person that I'd do anything I could to protect a child. That's awesome. That's great. Um, how w- how far would you suffer for your child? If you you knew that so- your child could be free of pain, free of, of, of turmoil and everything else, how far would you as a father suffer for your child? How far would you go physically? How far would you suffer? I'd go through I'd part of it. You go through quite a bit. So that's your love. That's your earthly love. That's not even a pure love. That's not even a love from God. Like that's that's our fatherly to our child love. As pure as it can be, it's not God's love. So imagine how much more God loves his children. 
when you put that into perspective, I said, so imagine God's love is so pure. He took our deserved punishment, his wrath by com coming as a mortal man and took the wrath of the father, but not before he showed us who we are. We are his children. Exactly. Exactly. Amen. There's Jimmy nothing Geiger we can do. Man, brother. Jimmy Geiger. <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing we can do. Like the whole, like Islam and many other, um, you know, side quest uh, beliefs. <laughs> they're they're very much how how much good can I do to earn my way, and, and our deeds are nothing but filthy rags. That's what it says. There's nothing good we can do. We do good really? because it's expected of us as we live in Christ. We're supposed exactly. to do good, but the good things they're nothing but dirty rags. It's just it comes with the, the territory of being a Christian. It's supposed you're supposed to do it. I point this out all the time. The thief on the cross. What did he do? Did he go get baptized? Did he join a church? No. Did he go out no. and do a no. bunch of good deeds? Did he do all? No. He believed on Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he said, this day will you be with me in paradise. Yeah. This day. Amen. He didn't say after you go to purgatory, after you do all this, people give your church enough money to buy your way into heaven. He said, so, this day you will be with me in paradise. I was fishing There's... with a friend of mine Friday night. And he was talking about good deeds. And I told him, good deeds are not the way. You have to know Jesus to get to heaven. He's the only way, the truth, and the life. And he's backslidden. His uh, YouTube name is uh, Hungry Fisherman. We do need to pray for him. Would you say hungry fisherman? Yes. You coming all live, JV? I almost think he did. <laughs> he, hey, he does follow. Off. He does follow uh, quite a few people on YouTube, and he's local. He's maybe 15, 20 minutes from me. And I was ministering to him Friday, and I gave him some stuff to think on. Or actually, um, the Holy Ghost gave him some things to think on, not me. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. I, I, what you were just talking about there, JV, about um, like the 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 uh, thief on the cross next to Jesus. So this is another thing that I, I thought of, thought about because when Jesus died on the cross, where did he go for three days? He went hell. to heaven. First, he went to hell, took the keys to death. He went to heaven and put his blood on the altar for us. That's what he did. So, did he go to hell for how long? Does it say, or it just says he went to hell and then he went to heaven? Yeah. Because some spe some speculate that he went to hell. He went to hell. He conquered and then hell. went to heaven. Then he went to there, heaven. There, there is that theory, and but it's kind of hard to decide because when he does come back, he says, "Don't touch me." Yeah. Did he is not yet ascended Don't hold to heaven? Me. Yeah. So why was he not? I don't know. It's hard to decide on that one because e either point or, point. even if he went to hell, he told the he he's proclaiming his his deity on that cross because he's telling the guy next to him, "I will be with you today in heaven." Well, he was he was already so he's referring to himself as God. He's but he dies, oh, yeah. he goes yeah. to heaven, <laughs> but the Jesus part of him is heading somewhere else at that point in time. So he's part, still proclaiming right? his deity there. Amen. That was mm -hmm. actually good, Daniel. That was, amen. That's that's yeah. what I hadn't thought of. In a, uh, I think I've heard that one before. The deity but part went time. to heaven, but the Jesus part had to go to, to hell to conquer death, hell, God, and the Part of the Trinity. But he said, you will be with me in heaven as amen. today. Uh -huh. Amen. But the, 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 but the son, the son had other plans. He had to go to hell. He had to go to Hades. But How the father's much do you guys always know sitting there. About Old Testament hell, though, because there was a place called Abraham's bosom, which was paradise, because mm -hmm. the captives couldn't go to heaven, heaven yet, because Jesus hadn't died for their sins yet. Right. Because when you when you read it, Jesus set the captives free. Well, what captives were they? They were Abraham, yeah. Daniel, 
all those guys were in a place called paradise and they could actually see the Hades part. If you hear the parable of Jesus, the, the poor man dies and goes to paradise, Abraham's bosom, and the rich man died and went to hell, and they could see each other afar off. Yeah. <laughs> and they could and talk Jesus, to each other. Didn't Jesus go to hell to give people a chance to repent? He exactly. We went to paradise and said, all right, guys, follow me. <laughs> yeah. he, he went to the land, the land of the dead. Yeah, or as, as it's referred to, I believe, is the land of the dead. So it's not really exactly. But yeah, there's, and that's why the body like, got up. If you read, the bodies got up and started walking around all over Jerusalem. The dead, yeah, got up yeah. and started walking. The dead ro rose and it was he let the captives free. Yeah, he <laughs> he opened the tombs and people came out and started walking among the living. Mm -hmm. That that would have been. An eye opener right there. There's a lot yeah. of stuff that was seeing someone that you know was dead for twelve years. A lot of the stuff just Jesus start walking the streets. How could you not? <laughs> That's why when people wouldn't, say, "Wouldn't this you know, if God would just do a miracle or two, then I would believe." I said, "No, you wouldn't." No, would, these people would, watched. Wouldn't people that scare the daylights out of you? Seen so someone that you knew was dead for 12 years start walking the streets. That's why I got all those behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think those would stop a dead person. Oh, I'm taking heads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there. When they see what I do, they will learn nothing. When they hear what I say, they will not understand. Otherwise, they will turn to me and be forgiven. Some people just... Like you, Jesus himself can come and talk to them in person, and they would just go to bed at night and wake up and say, Ah, I hallucinated. And then he did. Nothing you can do to change your mind. Well, the whole Bible humans never learn their lesson. After exactly. a thousand year oh. reign of Jesus, the devil's going to be let loose for a short period, and he's going to trick most of the world to go against Jesus. They just spent a thousand years with peace, no hunger, no war. No nothing. Everything you could ever humanly want. And they're still going to turn their backs on Christ. Of course they is. They don't want to follow him, man. Exactly. No. They Matthew to talk about pick up your cross and follow me. They don't want to do, do that, man. They still want to do they, it. They way. want what they want what the world has to offer. But when Jesus calls them home, calls them to the uh judgment, they're gonna wish it they had change their mind and follow him. I, I want to share this, man. Uh, Saturday, I had community balling, and then we asked, actually asked the question about this. And it's there's some of the youth is saying that they are scared, man. They are scared to even follow Jesus. They are feeling like the way that is the way that they need to live is the way that they are living on a daily basis. And that's, you know, that, having, that was the devil's trick. You know, and, and I, 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 exactly, JV, and I told him, I said, the best thing that you can offer is getting closer to Christ because what if you, and you, uh, you know, uh, some way, somehow, some death comes upon, um, upon you or your friends, would that be the example that you need to become closer to Christ or, or would that still keep you departed from, from Christ? You know, what decision do you need to make? And they continue to say, I'm scared. I, I, I'm, I'm still scared. I don't want to make that yet. I want to, like, as we said before, they feel like they have time and we do not have time. Damn, that's the devil telling them we, we don't have don't time. Know, what, what miracle was done at age nine? I know he went to the synagogue at that age, and he preached, preached with authority at age nine. nine. Preached at it with authority at age nine, and it right. But that was never his his first I mean, miracle. I think it was a miracle because I would have mine. They would slap me upside the head. <laughs> no, no, the first miracle that Jesus ever done before his uh, uh, he grew up like a tender a tender shoot with wisdom. I know the first miracle Jesus ever done was turning water to wine. And right, that was the first crazy. miracle. John tells you that in the book of John. It's his first miracle. Yeah. But I'm, I don't know any miracle that Jesus did at the age of nine. 
I always wonder if he was a good carpenter. You never hear about I would it. Say, he doesn't say anything yeah. about it in the Bible. I'm yeah, going to assume he was a perfect car- carpenter. <laughs> I wonder, because he was hey. 100% man and 100% God. So wasn't he a good carpenter on that man side? Or I would say the, end product, like- I say the end the end product was, was as perfect as you could get, but I also believe that he hit his thumb a few times with a hammer. Exactly. And he didn't <laughs> curse just to prove he was sinless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I was I always thought about I was like, because nobody brings that up in the Bible. It's like, I wonder if he was a good carpenter. Were people the, like, good thing he this became. A, this is your response for you, Aaron. Messiah, because that carpenter thing wasn't working out. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm trying to figure out which miracle Stewart's talking about. And and Ms. Dobbs, yeah. that's, that's something that I definitely try to tell them. But like I was saying, we came out of the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 17 today. I uh, remember switch my laundry and grab more coffee. I'll be right back. Uh, yeah, I need a coffee too. <laughs> I'll pay you both. Now, next week, oh, Buck, next- please. Uh, we can't, we, we talked about it out of the book of Matthew, Ms. Dobson. Uh, and I'll be happy to read it. Uh, chapter 17. Um, and uh, here we go uh, verse starting at the verse of 23 chapter 17 but he turned and he said unto Peter get thee behind me Satan thou art an offense unto me for thou salveth not the things that be of God but those that be of men Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give to exchange for his soul? The Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his work. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. When amen. I read that, to, when, amen. When I read that to, to them, some of them eyes that I seen, but they was like, you know, they were just big eyed. And so, please pray for our, all of our youth there. Yes, amen. Yeah, I, I do love I because I want we do that prayer. every chance we get, Melinda. Amen. Uh um, it's on our prayer list. And matter of fact, Daniel, would you like to lead us in a prayer? A uh, prayer for what? Just prayer for prayer? Yeah, just a uh a prayer of blessings, prayer of faith. Whatever, whatever you feel, feel lead to pray over. Sure. Let me wait for we JV to return. You can, we can if you want. We'll wait for JV. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, one of the things I love is our youth, man. I love being a part of them. I love being with them. I love trying to be the best. A leader or motivator or, or example of Christ because they need that man. Oh yeah, uh, they they again all they see is this worldly activities, man, and that's one of the things that God asks us not to be is of this world, just to be in this world. So we need people that will just step up to that plate and and guide them in the direction that they need to go. Through the word, of course, not of through this fleshly activities, but through God's word. And that's what I stand upon, man. That's why I said I, I I love what God has placed in my lap. 
and I will continue to cherish it and to go forth in it because I know God is not done with me in, in, in this situation, man, because it, it, it's no way possible that, you know, a man can do of God, uh, of the Satan's work and make it into God's kingdom. It's not happening. So I'm right. The only time God's done with us is when we exhale our last breath. Amen. Yeah. I pray daily that God uses me. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he is. <laughs> oh, he used me Friday a lot. And I didn't realize it until after I left. Then he showed me, he said, see what I can do through you? I'm like, okay, I'll be a willing vessel. I'm gladly, All right. gladly take a willing right. vessel. Last load is in the washing machine. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a quick, I'm gonna say a prayer here, uh, JV. I was asked to do a prayer there by Advent. Yep. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do a quick prayer here. Um, <clears throat> let's humble ourselves, Heavenly Father, as we humbly come to you today. We like to raise our prayers to you to thank you for being the perfect father thank you for your word thank you for coming and and showing us your grace your mercy and your your perfect love father we pray for those who are who are growing in this day and age the youth the children teenagers the young adults and everyone else up until old that they come to know you that they find you they find the peace that you offer that surpasses all understanding Father, I pray that you bless the parents and the adults and the mentors in the lives of the youth, that you strengthen us in your word, that you strengthen us to, to be able to articulate and to share the gospel with these children so we can keep them on the narrow path to you so that they may not fault and, and give in to the, the sins of the world and that they keep you in their, in their sight and, and lead towards you Every day they grow in you, grow in your wisdom, grow in faith, and become more like you so that the Father can look and see the reflection of the Son in who we are day by day. Father, I pray for this, this panel. I pray, pray for Adver Fish, Fisherman for, for doing this and to bring in your word to those who are eager to listen and that you bless those who participate and those who may stumble upon it even later. Lord Jesus, in your name. Pray. Amen. 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 Remember, Amen. everybody, the Bible says today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. And next week we will be finishing up the book of Job, I hope. Yes. I, I, I got my headphones in. I can hear you guys. I can talk. I'm just going to go into the kitchen. I got to grab a coffee or something. No problem. Don't mind the mess. It exploded here. I'm moving away, by the way. I heard you're moving, but. Yeah, I, I put it uh, back to Newfoundland, back to the island. Oh, you're going oh, back okay. out there, eh? Yeah, I'll get <laughs> they're, they're, they're kicking me out of the military, so I'm going back there, and I'm starting a homestead. Hey, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Uh, oh, wow. yeah, so, really cool. So, pretty blessed to do so. Uh, a lot of changes is coming, and this is not a, this is not no. I, as I said, deeds are all but filthy rags because it's all glory to God. I'm actually dedicating my entire channel and all the revenue I got. It's going to go to World Vision, and uh, so we can do God's work that way. Amen. And, uh, and I'm all get back to me. Yeah. No, I know. You're always giving stuff away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it what is, uh, that's, is. that's what I was I was uh, convicted to do uh, because I do have a salary and everything else. Like like I, it's not like I'm not rich or nothing, but I, I have money coming in, right? Exactly. But uh, yeah, that's it, what it's, I it's do good. what I can with what the Lord gives me. You know what? You notice what I've noticed? It, everybody knows about the feeding programs I do overseas and stuff like that. I have noticed the more I give, the more God gives me. Yeah, and this is that's all there is to it. I give, yeah, giver. I give tons of money away, and you know what? Every time I look at my bank account, I'm just fine. Money, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Right, and, and and that's the thing. It's you're supposed to because it's like you said last time, uh, JB, when we were talking. It isn't. Money that is the root of all evil. It's the love of money. Love, yes. Money, everything on this planet, every single thing God made, God owns. How we Amen. use it is determining how it's, 
whether it's good or whether it's bad. It's no different. Like, and this goes right back to the Old Testament when when God said, "I'm just paraphrasing here," but He's like, "You cut down a tree, you use the wood to make a fire to break your bread, and then you carve idols out of the remaining wood and worship it." It was more useful when you made it to cook your bread. Exactly. <laughs> the same thing with money. Exactly. Exactly. Amen to that. <laughs> I agree with that one. I agree with that one wholeheartedly. He even makes yeah. fun of me. He's like, you worship gods that have no mouths, that have no ears. <laughs> Yet I am a living God. I am a living God. I can hear him yelling over there. He's agreeing to something. <laughs> I hear him yelling. Man, I, I that don't have really no earbuds in. <laughs> That's a man of God when you can hear him halfway across the house. Man, oh, man. Cat getting out. Oh, I, I, I really do believe, guys, that um, you know that we should definitely, definitely do this more often, man. Um, it's to the point where we. Can I think some- we need to do like a Saturday night. We can do it on your channel, Eric, because I know you need some watch hours. Yeah, we can do it on your channel, Eric. We should do like a Saturday night uh, Bible study fishing night. We all go out fishing. We all bring our Bibles. We're all through three feet of ice. (laughs) And I'll bring our lights. (laughs) Hey, hey, I got a light that light. I got a light that I hook up to a car battery that light up the whole half the bank. Yeah, I got, I got plenty of light, so I ain't worried about light. Well, anybody that's ever watched my nighttime light lives know I got plenty of lights. <laughs> I got a compact <laughs> light. That's, uh, <laughs> we'll just pretend we we understand what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not a bad idea, Jay. You know, just like that's a great that's a great idea. For one. Well, appeal to people because we're out there fishing. Everybody loves watching fishing. Obviously, oh, yeah. it's big on YouTube. And uh, you can go out fishing. We can preach the word. I guarantee you, people that normally wouldn't come into these will come, come to that. I've always wanted to do it. So I always wanted to do it while I was out hunting, but I don't know how that would work. Because y'all know sometimes I get worked up when I start. Yeah. If I'm out there, like, start preaching hardcore, all the deer are going to run to the next guy. (laughs) Hey, who knows? You might draw them to you. You might draw them to you out of curiosity. Never know how God works. (laughs) (laughs) I'm up for fishing during the day. Hey, listen, we can be, hey. Me and JV has been talking about going fishing, you know, uh, on Bible study. So I know I can't do it next week. I think. I think Let it's me know. Rain, week. snow here next Saturday. Hey, yeah. I'm up for a nighttime fishing. Uh, Bible rain, fishing. snow next Saturday for me. Well, we got over three feet of snow here, and or, or snow of ice on our lakes. So, uh, and unfortunately, we had a weird melt, so we don't even have any. Uh, um, I have no way of even getting to the lakes right now. It's, the skidoo's can't get out there, and it's too much slush and ice for uh, side by side. Well, I'll probably hey, have to. I'm, up for, a, I'm up for uh, night fishing. Just let me know what night. Yeah, we'll probably have to uh, wait a month because I'm that way too. Like the fish just ain't biting here. Because we do have rivers that are open and stuff, but the water's still so cold. Like, like super. Because I said the, the ice literally just melted. <laughs> and we're still getting snow and ice and stuff. So, yeah, I'll have to wait at least a month. There is an ice wall where I normally go fishing. I can't get out there anymore. <laughs> Belinda says she's we, one block from the river. We had a... Uh, we had a melt and there was a bunch of runoff because where we go fishing is called Lake Melville. It's like it's a it's brackish water. And we had a lot of runoff, which pushed down into the freshwater part. And then when the tide came in, you had all this water flow and the, the ice got pushed in and it actually created like a six foot ridge of 
ice that goes on like kilometers. You can't get over it. Wow. Yeah. Where it just kind of, it just kind of came together like that and buckled up. Yeah, that, that's we'll have to wait a while because us, us northern people still have to deal with this stuff, <laughs> and he's even further. Hey, hey that's <laughs> that me and Eric is the waters are warming up and the cats are starting to bite. Well, hey, I was just watching Backlash earlier, and he was talking about he's already seen Bass Bed. I'm like, my bass uh-huh. hasn't even thought about moving yet, <laughs> let alone getting to bed. <laughs> hey, didn't he? Didn't he backlash cast it on top of it? That was hilarious. <laughs> I had to say it in chat. I was like, oh, that's why they call you Backlash. <laughs> uh-huh. Hey, I, I can show you a bunch of videos of his that he backlashes every kind of rod or reel that you give him. Yeah, that was a push button. How do you backlash uh-huh. a push button? <laughs> oh, all right. Hey, so we he got hit a- the button when he catches it. He hit the, uh, the reel and it locked in. <laughs> it was funny. I was having a good time watch. And his daughter called. Oh, yeah. We do- we walked down today to muddy because rain. Oh. The river. Yeah. Well, it's be nice to live in a block away from the river. Of course, our river isn't that far away. Vermilion River is literally. If I lived a back. block from the river, I'd have bank pools out. I actually almost. There was a house that was for sale right on the Vermilion River here. I almost bought it. My only problem was it, it was a double wide trailer. If it would have had a garage, I would have bought it. Hey, but Jim. A double wide trailer just won't hold all my crap. I need more storage. Yeah, you done, brother. How you done, brother? <laughs> you too many toys. I have told him several times he is more than willing to just pass him along. <laughs> I got his back. I try I say, I got you. <laughs> hey, I take some donations from him as well, but <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, we we got you like like a good old banana pudding, but we stick together, baby. <laughs> you know, someday I should actually do that. Just start giving out rods and reels because I have so many I don't use anymore. Tim, you never <laughs> let your you're here in the right time. If I ever took ever if I ever yeah. actually recorded my fish room, mm. yeah. Yeah. I don't dare uh, <laughs> people I'm, would I'm, know I have no kitchen. Those back there behind me, those are just my show pew pews. If I actually ever showed you my gun room, <laughs> I, 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 let's say that the, the, those are just for show. My 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 impressive ones are hidden. <laughs> I cannot do a video of my seven by seven by seven uh, storage <laughs> shed because it has all my fishing rods and fishing gear and everything else in there. That's not in my truck. Well, I kind of cheat with my fishing gear because I was sponsored by Piscafun for years, and they gave me everything. Like I had free everything. I have more fishing line than I know what to do with from Piscafun. Mm. (laughs) 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 Yeah, I I like that. Eric raises his hands like me. I take some. (laughs) No, I'm in uh, South Dakota. Uh, the Vermilion River. It actually runs out of Vermilion Lake. It runs to Vermilion. It's kind of weird because Vermilion Lake is nowhere near Vermilion. But it runs from Vermilion Lake to Vermilion, South Dakota, and then dumps into the Missouri. Mm-hmm. And actually, and there's, hey, and there's also Vermilion Lake a River in Illinois. Yeah, that's what Catfish Dog was just saying. So do we have any more prayer requests down there in the chat? I mean, I've gotten way, we got way off topic there. Would you like to uh, do a prayer? Yeah, I mean, I was hoping we need a. Was there I any more prayer requests? None yet. Hi, Miss Joan. Welcome in. Miss Joan, thanks for coming in. I know uh, the ones I gave you guys earlier. I have a prayer list. 
I know the uh, the praise. We know the two praise reports. Um, let's see. Your shirt got the same design, JV. Oh yeah. Uh, where'd you get that shirt? Um, the same thing I see. <laughs> I got two more too. I should go grab them and show them to you. I got two. I like to get one of them shirts. Eric, when, when, when we went live today, early, early, early yesterday for Bible said AK Fish Church, I was on that man like, bro, where did you get this from? And where's my size? <laughs> Lord, no, I'll be willing to come. Thank you, Tim. We won't do that. Yeah, I posted it up on on the screen. <laughs> bless you, bless you. Thank you. I got this one too. Tim, we got you in our prayers too. Faith over fear. Oh, that's nice. I got Miss Joanne. This one. Redeemed. I like that shirt too. What'd you get them on Amazon or what? I think I found them. Yeah, it might have been Amazon. Oh, I just take Amazon. Them? Yeah. JV Canadian, Canadian Amazon is different. Yeah. Catfish Dog Amazon. says, "Pray for one of my fishing buddies. He passed away Saturday morning, and he's been having the worst three weeks because Catfish of the situation dog. that I told you about earlier." I actually have Catfish Dog on my. Yeah, Sorry now we hear that Catfish buddy that lost. Uh, I got him down. The died Saturday. Catfish Dog. He's an Illinois brother. I'm sorry. If I do need to talk to someone about something, I know he's a phone call away. Yeah, we are here for each other, man. We are our brother's people. He he's a blessing, so. He knows I'm here that for him if he needs anything. As brothers and sisters in Christ, that is what we are supposed to be here, is be here for each other. Yep. I hey, I know you guys are you here for me. You can't count on each other. Who can you count on? That's that's The world sure in heck ain't going to have your back. No. <laughs> <laughs> Scripture says be there for everyone, especially those of faith. Exactly. Exactly. That was messaging me. That Dom? Yeah, it's Dom. He's out fishing. Well, he's gonna have to wait. Did you did you see <laughs> it too? Yeah, he sent yeah, it. You did. Hey, you did ask for a prayer request, and you did get it. Uh, I was waiting for. I lost my nephew and two close friends in the last. Wow. Oh man. All right, we're gonna he's, pray for that comfort right hit, here. He's getting hit by threes. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we are here gathered in your name. We, you say when there are two or more in agreement, you are in the midst. Well, since we know you are here, Lord, we are asking for you to send the comforter over to Catfish Dog. He has lost many loved ones. And we know only you can heal a broken heart. It says so in the Bible. You can heal the brokenhearted. You can comfort us. And he needs comfort, Lord. Yes, Jesus. He, losing a loved one is tough. Even you cried when you when Lazarus died. And you knew you were going to raise him back. You know how it feels to lose a loved one. Please be with him. Comfort him. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Lord. It is such a blessing to know that you are our comforter. No matter what happens, what we go through, you will never leave us or forsake us. Yes, Lord. You're, you're the complete God. The God of love, the God of understanding. 
and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, I ask this prayer. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jack. Jack, you're still there. Oh, she's probably waiting for me. We're about to. I'm, I'm going to record a Bible study with her as soon as we're done with this. And then I got to record two with Daisy after that. <laughs> Please. Pray. I need a prayer for my hair. Hair? What are you talking about? <laughs> my, my, look, look at it. It's like wire. Like it goes wherever I point it. I can like. <laughs> Lord, please help Backwoods take a bath. <laughs> First you washed his sins. Week. What are you talking about? First you washed his sins. Now we need you to wash his hair. <laughs> Brother, Brother, just take a bucket of soapy water and pour it over Backwoods. Top of his head to the top of the soles of his feet. Throw a little bit of, bit of soap in some holy water. Yeah. Pray for go please. David and Sin starting a new channel. Heard the word. He was the fire. he has the fire and soul from God to spread the word. Cool. Amen. More people out to spreading the word, the better. Amen. Especially in today's day and age. Amen. Absent with from the body, present with the Lord. Wow. Resting with the Lord. That's right, bro. Admit, listen, listen. It's okay to cry, brother. It's it's totally okay to cry, man. It's, it's good. Jesus it's cried. Good to cry. Jesus cried when Lazarus died, and he right, knew he was going to raise him from the dead. Crying is also a cleansing. <laughs> crying yes, can also be a it's, cleansing. It's tears of joy, man. It's a natural human emotion. We are made in the image of God. That doesn't mean we look like him. We all look completely different. We are made yeah. in the image, which means we are three parts. We are body, soul, and spirit. We're just like God. We are made in three. Plus, we're also made like God because God has emotions. God gets angry. God gets yes. sad. Yes. God is happy. Read the Bible. God has all the same emotions we have. We were made in his image. I, I, I know this is it. I know when God cries, it rains. That's what my mom. And when he's really sad and it really, he really be, cries, yes. <laughs> and, storms and heavy downpours. And then my mom <laughs> told me when he's mad and crying, that's when we have a thunderstorm and he's yelling at us. Yeah. <laughs> my, mom, my mom used to say the thunderstorms is when the angels were moving the furniture around. <laughs> I see it this way. When God, we when get God, my cardboard box ready. <laughs> what? I see, it this, I see what? I see it this way. Yeah, when God gets mad, what's going on, brother? Place. What up, Bill Jack? Would you say, I Evan? This, man, I, 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 I see it this I, way. When God gets mad, oh, the earth quakes. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Wait till, oh, there wait till this Earth fills his. They are all like, "Where is your God? Where is your God?" They don't want to know where he is because when he does come in his wrath, they're gonna wish they never saw it. <laughs> well, when, when there was a there was there was a natural, the Earth the Earth had a had a had a natural sh uh, a reaction to when Christ died. It says yeah. like the, the 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 drapes the curtains were torn from top to bottom. The shook. Right, yeah. but it, yeah. in the in yeah. the uh, yeah, well, it, it, that's an earthquake, right? Because that's like the you look at um, and the curtains ripped open and the yeah. drains were open. Well, that was symbolic uh, too. The, Everything that the was curtains, closed off yes. was open. That was symbolic. The, that curtain ripping. Oh yeah, but there was there was also because it's like uh, uh, the the curtains the, the the way they were mounted. Were physically mounted to the wall, so if the if, if there was a crack, if there was an earthquake and it shifted, the curtains, the rod of the curtain would have torn it with it. Right, but it didn't. It just ripped right down the center. Yeah, that was symbolic because that was the curtain that, that, that went was, to the holy of holies, and when it ripped down the middle, that was God. That was Jesus, pretty much in God's way of saying, that cutoff from us to God is now over. 
the door. Yeah. And God just took those curtains. Because <laughs> it used to be God only the high priest to go in there open. once a year could go into that Holy yeah. of Holies. Once a year. And he had to be cleansed before he could, could even go in. Those, could you imagine what those high priests... Oh, th that's the why they paid everybody the off to keep it a secret. That? <laughs> I, I don't know why people don't think things like uh, earthquakes and all these other things. Like they, they, we have a we have a supernatural God that created a natural world. Exactly. If there's, if there's times He's going to do things, it's going to be what we look at lots of times in a natural way. But that doesn't mean it's not it's not God's doing. Oh, it's like he flooded, he the flooded the earth. Don't move Just without water. God's permission. No. He holds everything. So anytime anything does, it has to have God's permission. Yeah, anything yeah. that goes on, he has control. I, people are like, well, why would God do this? Why wouldn't he? Look at how wicked this world is. We're lucky yeah. he hasn't rained hellfire down yet. <laughs> because he is more justified to do it. Wait till, oh, this word, church, word. wait till the church is gone. And then all Look at what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And, and how much was the bad thing uh, is, is Jesus said if Sodom and Gomorrah knew the things that we know, they would have repented. The yeah, but, hey, how much worse are we uh than Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah now? Oh, we're right there, I think. We're pretty close. To I it. think we're pretty past that. And we're way yeah. past it. But America, I mean I can say for America, we're we're past it. We're actually better in a lot of countries. Could you imagine being one of those European countries? Holy buckets! Man, the those Europe, that goes man. off in those places. They tell their women not to report rapes from other cultures because it's racist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's things that's going on that just mind-boggling. Nuts. No, Jack. Oh, it's absolutely. Yeah. Have you ever watched Expedition Bible? Uh, no, I haven't. You should. You should uh, just mark it down and look at it when you get a chance. It's a. It's a guy. He's a Christian archaeologist. Um, oh yeah. Uh, archaeologist and that. geologist, I believe. Right. And he travels around and like, like for instance, uh, this, the, this. Yeah, it's great. The the town of uh, um, Nineveh, the city of Nineveh. Oh, yeah. Found it. There's no. They found the city of Nineveh, and it's only mentioned in 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 the Book of Jonah. It's only mentioned in the in the Bible. Yeah, right. And people are like, because people, people are so easy to say the Bible is not a historical book. Well, it's been proven to be a historical book. They found right. the seed of David. Yeah. One hundred percent found it. Hey, the sad thing is, the Muslims found, over there are taking all the historical things. You can watch them, and they're oh, they're destroying it. But hey, yeah. they found David's tomb. Yeah. No, they found Joseph's tomb. Yeah, but they also found David's tomb. Yeah. I know they found Joseph's tomb. Yeah, know. yeah, and because it, it's not where they thought it, where they think it is. It's off. It's it's. Yeah, that was uh, an expedition Bible too. Yeah, because it it actually talks about walking along a wall, yep. and then Buddy yeah, finds the wall and he goes to where the tomb is. Yeah, you know the great they, thing they found Sodom and Gomorrah back in like the eighties. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's Sulf, crazy the because they balls find in the sulfur ground. balls this big. Yeah. <laughs> You light them on fire and they burn forever. Yeah. Hey, didn't they? Didn't they? He also find the uh, the Ark of the Covenant. No. There's theories of where it is, but there's um, no. Open I proof. actually a lot of people are saying it's in Ethiopia. In Daniel, but I almost did, because the Ark of the Covenant is one of those things that is so. But see, someone... when when Nebuchadnezzar was conquering Jerusalem. The first time he came and conquered them, he left the king still on, and he left because he wasn't king yet, Nebuchadnezzar. He was just general Nebuchadnezzar, and he found out his father died as he was conquering Jerusalem. Well, after he left, the Jews attacked Egypt after Nebuchadnezzar had just beat Egypt, because they're, now they're weak, because Nebuchadnezzar just beat them. The Jews attacked them, and the reason why... A lot of people think is why they went into Egypt is because they were trying to get the Ark back because they had moved it from Jerusalem because they knew Babylon was coming 
and they didn't want to lose it to Babylon. But then Babylon conquered Egypt, and so the Jews wanted it back. And that's the point in history where the ark got lost, is did the Jews get it back or did it stay in Egypt? Nobody knows. Tim, I want to say this, brother, if you ever need to talk, you know you got my number, you can call me. Hope he comes tomorrow. Amen, Hilljack. I just saw that. You know that song, Come Jesus Come? I listen to it every yeah. day, Phil Jack. I literally do. Every day I listen to that song, Come Jesus Come, because I mean it. Right now. Right now, if Jesus came, if Here I heard you come, shout, baby. I'm going to race you all up there. I'm beating you there. Hey. This fat boy's going to beat you all there. <laughs> hey. I'll be there before you, just by a blink of an eye. I'm, I'm out of <laughs> here. There ain't nothing on this earth that's going to keep me here. Hopefully all no. my loved ones and friends are coming with me. But if not, God said he's going to wipe every tear away. Oh. Hey, I pray for all my family and friends and my brothers and sisters in Christ to meet me in heaven. But when Jesus comes and he I'm brings his eye and calls me, I'm gone. You all can keep all this hurt and suffering and hunger and despair and disease. and Hey, Baba. The fallen there's world. My, there's my Baba. Baba. Baba, you want to come up and sing us a uh, praise at, song? She's at work. Oh. She, she's yeah, washing everybody's good. laundry but mine. <clears throat> <laughs> hey, I need I need a, a lady to come and do my laundry for me. The two guys that oh, have man. the wives are on the top, and the two guys that have the wives, you can see they're being held down. They're on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Baba, I'm sorry. That's all right, Baba. Baba, Baba, Baba. We got to quit saying her name. I'm going to sing that song again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't outrun the bear, but for that, I'll give you a run for your money. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I ain't afraid of the bear. If the bear's coming, I'm running to him. We're going down. Fist fight. Hey. <laughs> if he JP. beats me, I'm going to heaven. If I hey. beat him, I'm going to be JP. on magazines. If and- <laughs> you are running from the bear, I'm going to trip you so I, I can get to heaven before you. <laughs> You ain't getting to the bear before people are tripping so I can get to the bear. I'll take that bear head on. I cannot say this enough. That um, one of the most things about being saved and loving Christ is is that you can still have fun. Still laugh. Nobody has more fun than this. You're only only doing it in a godly way. You know, you you know you the rights from the wrongs, you know the good from the bads, and and it's like, isn't that amazing that we can sit up here and know that we know that we are a child of God and we know who we, who we represent, and it, it is like amazing that we can still laugh, have fun, and, and, and still know that we still making God smile. It's oh, amazing. Yeah. You know, yes. that we, nobody has more fun than me, and I don't have to have a drop of alcohol or anything to go nope. with. It. Do hey, you know how we have so much fun? I got the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. <laughs> the Holy Ghost can bring tears of joy. He can bring bring the happiness, the peace, the love. You know the sad everything thing we is, need. I hate, I hate meeting a Christian guy or a Christian woman who's just always a downer. I'm like, what are you so sad about? You're saved. Hmm. But I yes. get that. You know, me and Daisy, we have our thing, and we're constantly laughing and having a good time doing stupid We're things. commanded to be joyful. Yeah. And I've had people like, you guys are too goofy. You guys are too... Too tight. Like, what is the problem? <laughs> Thank God I'm happy. <laughs> Got that right, bro. I'm breathing. <laughs> I'm breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Jack, hear what Hale Jack said? What? 
<laughs> they might have done to the covenant what he does with stuff they don't want to lose. He put it somewhere and forgot where they put it. Exactly. It says in the Bible, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. But uh, you know what I think actually happened to the covenant? I think it got lost for reasons. Same reason why they we hit don't need it. this by body. I still people I, would, would first, still be worshiping it. My my personal thoughts is the Ark of the Covenant was under Golgotha Hill in a cave because when the ground cracked and the blood of Christ went somewhere, it went onto the altar of onto the Ark to pay for the. Uh, Pay for our sins. Well, I believe you're half. That's my belief. Our sins. He took his blood and took it to the altar in heaven and laid it on. Right. Because if you look at the temp, the tabernacle, um, the Bible says is a picture of heaven. When you look at how they built, the reason why he, it the specific, why it had to be so specifically done. Is because it was a model of what heaven looks like. And it was beautified to also resemble the garden. Exactly. Before right. the fall. So when Jesus died, that's why he had to go to heaven. <clears throat> and he shed his he went up to heaven, walked up to the mercy seat there, and laid his blood on the altar there. Yep. And then at that very moment, God said, now you're all justified. The, uh, Are you the <laughs> Nephew Austin, thank Jamie. you for that. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. He's also a uh, channel member. Thank you, Austin. Wait, but you as much as it would be cool to find the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, yeah, Amen. I should have that every day. I love it. <laughs> I got I got something I can uh that's really cool about that that I, I uh when I was doing my Bible study the other day it kind of pieced together. That's cool. I loved it. When, when I saw that I was like, yes, they're not looking in the inside, looking at the blood, man. I exactly. love that. Uh -huh. I really that's what so important. That's you that's can't go your way. You have to be washed in the blood. That's it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> As you, you know, um, your way in, you can't do nothing. I was reading, I was doing Bible study the other day. You just reminded me of something there, Eric. Um, so when they, when, the, when the Passover happened and they had to put the blood of the sacri of the sacrifices on the door frame, right? They use a bundle of hyssop. They use hyssop uh, reeds or whatever you want to call it, branches. And that's what they used to brush it on the door frame. That's what was commanded. They, so they used hyssop yeah. to do it. So when Jesus was on the cross, there's two times they offered him a drink, right? The right. first time, first time they offered it to him, it was wine with gall. So I started doing right. some research of what is, what is gall. Gall is ma mostly made of myrrh. Myrrh in high concentrations is also a, um, it's a neuro, uh, I forget what it's called, but basically... It's a neurotoxin. It basically makes you uh, high and lethargic, so you so it minimizes the pain you're experiencing. So the first time they tried to give him that on the cross, it's not necessarily as a way of like, here you go, and we're going to make you suffer because it tastes as bad. It might have been a act of um, of of mercy in in a sense, being like. He doesn't deserve this. We'll give him this. But when Jesus tasted it, he tasted the gall. He turned from it right away because he wanted to feel the full wrath of God. He wasn't going to right. numb himself for his purpose. Later on, he takes a drink from a sponge of sour wine. The sour wine was actually, uh, it's a, it, it was part of the day kit of all the Roman soldiers. Sponges and sour wine was part of their day kit. And they use sponges for everything from putting it inside their helmets to stop their head from chafing or for cleaning, whatever it might have been. They took the sour wine, which was a way of the Romans used to drink because they loved drinking it. It, it, was, it wasn't high in alcohol. It had no alcohol in it, but it made water taste better. So 
they would carry this flask of sour wine. So the, the sour wine they gave him was actually more likely an act of compassion towards him. So he took the wine and he drank the wine before he gave up his spirit. And he said that he was, you know, he was done. It's been paid. What they gave it to is they put the spun on the end of a hyssop branch and they raised mm-hmm. it up to him on the cross and let him drink the sour wine. He took just enough wine to wet his throat so he could say his last words and then release his spirit. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's hey, cool. Austin, what is your baby girl's name, if you don't mind me asking? Hey, Gabby, did you ever? Oh, my gosh. No, I didn't. i sorry, bro. I had such a fight with my phone company this week. I compl- I didn't have a phone for a few days. Ask Eric. <laughs> And uh, so I, I forgot completely, but I still have your address. Don't let me. I'll fill it out right now. Thank you. Marina it. Jane Detters is uh, nephew Austin's five month old baby's name. Marina Jane. I will fill that out right now. I'll make sure I drop it in sometime this week. I'm not going to say it's. That way, we but- have a name. A name, a personal name to send, put on a prayer list for. That is a beautiful I'll name, tell you, man. I'm so, uh, Daniel, just sitting here thinking about everything you said, man. I, I've, I've seen it, the movies. I've, I've read it, you know, and we even doing an Easter play in our church and. It oh, just stuns me that we 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 have such a glorious God, man. Just just a just a sip, just the wettest throat, man. Just didn't want to get too much. Just 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 a little bit, man. Just a, just he, yeah. He knew he was about to die. He he was about to die, and he needed to say the last thing he had to say. So he just whispered, "I'm thirsty," and they gave him a little bit of sour wine on a sponge raised up to him on the cross with with a with a hyssop branch the same thing they use to paint the blood the sacrificial blood over the door frames on the passover again there's so many links in the bible on every page of the old testament i'm telling you yeah (laughs) every page of the old testament Man, it's just, uh, it just looks, it makes me feel, you know, that, hey, God, thank you for, again, your only begotten son. Thank you for Jesus. I've talked about it a million times. Just to have this book, this book right here, took 2,000 years to write. Because the first book is Job. You know, I mean, I know it starts in Genesis, but the first book ever written down was Job. It was about the same time as. Baby, you mean this book? Yes, that book right there. That or book. this one. Are you this sure it's not oh, this one? This one. I only got two hands. <laughs> Come on. You see you talking about this book. <laughs> this one. You got this one? But it took 2,000 years to write. Over 40 authors. There's 66 books in here. Thousands of years apart. And the book flows so well together. It's uncanny. Just for that to happen is proof that it had to be done from an outside source. Somebody outside our time and space looking in. That's the only way that could have happened. Because there's no way over 2,000 years people could have put this book together and made it make nearly as much sense and run together the way it does. But this book is perfectly written. Have you... Have you ever seen the cross reference of the Bible uh, where they show the graph where, where they take one thing where it links to the New Testament and they take something from the New Testament where it links to the Old Testament and they go back yep. and forth? You ever see that graph? Well, I've seen uh, when I was in uh, pastoral college, we, we, did, you, Austin, man, we had a big it, chart. We had a big chart that we would do. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, when I was in pastoral college, we had a big chart that ours wow. wasn't like that, but yeah, we had like 
lines going <laughs> everywhere. It was nuts. That's Dude, that's beautiful. all those all those th- all those lines that you see are connections between one point of the Bible to the other. It's spanning between books and then from Old to New Testament. Every one of those. Wow. Each of those lines you see at the bottom are are, are basically verses. Mm-hmm. Now, now, now th- this is my question to you. How did that even form? I know you said it's going from one book of the Bible, one book of the Bible to the next, but how did that even do that? How how was that even? Well, just like when we go through and I point out something like we're reading in Daniel, yeah, and really yeah. somewhere in the so, New Testament. So they've been working on this for many many years. Yeah, they're basically they start off at Genesis right at the beginning, and they go, well, we'll read where where does Genesis link into the Bible, and they draw a line to where it links to this to this verse, and where it links throughout, and so on and so forth. Yeah, let me zoom in a little better. That is cool. That's, that is beautiful, man. And in each of those little lines at the bottom is like a verse of the Bible or, or a, however it's read. Because right in the middle, see that big long one? What do you think that is? I bet you it's a Psalms 119-ish. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Psalms, I know that one. <laughs> Psalms 119, right, the longest, the longest. Yeah. I coastal. No. <laughs> next Come back up. I'm feeling shy. Night. I'm trying now, to find. Sunday, remember, <laughs> next Sunday night, we will be finishing off, I hope, the book of Job. Yes. So, yeah, shout outs because we're almost done here. It's 9 o'clock. Um, shout outs. to 11 friends. o'clock. Yeah, well, to you. It's 10, 10 o'clock for him. <laughs> uh, next Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, Eric B's channel. We're doing Daniel. We'll be doing Daniel 5 and 6, I'm pretty sure, yes. unless I get into one of my moods and we only do five, <laughs> <laughs> which I do sometimes. <laughs> and then Avid, uh, I think it's 7 8, eight, o'clock, 8 p.m. Central. Yeah, it's 8 p.m. Central Time. We're finishing Job. Sunday morning, 7 a.m., I have my Bible study on Genesis with Daisy will be coming out. Wednesday, 7 a.m., I have my Bible study with Daisy on John coming out. And now Friday, I will have my Bible study at 7 a.m. with Jax on Romans coming out. <laughs> a few more put together and I have the whole week covered. <laughs> hey, I like it. Daisy quack quack. <laughs> Did you see yeah. that video I put out? Yeah, I seen that. I, gotta go I told her you can't do anything in front of me because if I see you do something stupid, I'm gonna screen record it and I'm putting it up. <laughs> I like it. She's there with the laugh track in the background, and while she's doing it, she's like click. click, click. <laughs> There yeah, you go. Watch this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good video. That. Oh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good each one. Each book of the Bible reflects God. He almost sang how each book re- reflects back to God. Yeah, that kid. Yeah. Uh, you can tell that kid was brought up in a good home. Hill Jacks and will be uh, later. Hill Jack. Back here, uh, next Sunday night at 8 Central. Wait for JB to come back. Oh. Whoa, that is weird. <sighs> what right. you got in the box? Oh, it's just my address stickers. <laughs> I don't like writing stuff out, so I just had a bunch of stickers with my address made out. <laughs> okay, it's Man, this two hours went by fast. They always do. I mean, I, mean, I love studying the Bible. I don't know, I probably do too much, but yeah, but no, you never do too much studying the Bible. Well, I, do, I mean, I get behind I, on stuff because I'm doing. Haven't you thing. noticed every time we do two hours of prayer, it goes by like that? Yeah. Every time I do it, anything and that's. Bible related, it always goes by quick for me. I love studying. People Bible don't understand that. I love studying the Bible. When I do my big breakdowns, it's probably boring as heck to everybody else, but it gets me excited. 
I, I'm fascinated that every time I have a question about something or I just look at something that seems like you could just easily glance over, there's meaningfulness to the small things. Yes. Like the stuff you normally mm-hmm. normally just consider as part of the story. Those little details are significant. Yep. Yeah, the smallest yep. little thing you wouldn't even think. Or the smallest yeah. little quote in there. All of a sudden, one time you'll read through it and it'll hit you and be like, whoa, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait a minute. Like I, I got, I, like, I find that you have to, you also have to, like, study history a little bit and learn about the culture of the time because, like, the whole thing with the sour wine, it's so easy to be like, oh, that's horrible. They tried to give him sour wine to drink. Why wouldn't they give him water? But then when you learn that sour sour wine was the preferred drink of the Roman soldiers, and you got to remember that some of these Roman soldiers that actually, like, were there during the crucifixion, they also seen the things he did. Right. They were also, a lot of them was like this. I mean, when Jesus died, it was a Roman soldier who was the first one to proclaim he was the son of God. Yeah. It wasn't a it wasn't a Jewish person. It wasn't even a disciple. When no, he was, died on the cross, soldier. it was a Roman soldier that said he surely was the son of God. Could you imagine how that changed those Roman soldiers' lives? Well after seeing that. Here's here's what's interesting and about the, the whole Roman thing. The Jewish people were kind of upset because their Messiah was to take them out of oppression. Right? They were supposed to, they 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 were thought their Messiah was coming to end the Roman Empire. Yeah, it but was Jesus did it. Jesus did end the Roman Empire through Christianity. Christianity was what one of the most social upheaving things that happened to the Roman Empire that ultimately resulted in his demise. Because <laughs> every bless you. Bless you. Everyone bless you. knows everyone knows that the Roman Empire fell. But if you ask someone how did the Roman Empire fall? Most people don't know the answers. And Christianity was the, the biggest driving force. I don't know if you know the story of Perpetua. Uh, it fall, it fell. No. That's what happened. What's that? It come back together eventually. He said, tell yeah, us what happened. Uh, so Perpetua was a daughter of a very elite uh, Roman commander. And she was a pagan. They were, you know, they were all pagans at the time. And this was during the time where the Christians, during Nero Circus, when Christians were being prosecuted and lit on fire and wrapped in rags and, and oil right. poured on them and burned alive. And then they were brought to the uh, into Vatican, what is now Vatican City. They were brought there and they were tortured and killed and just just ruthlessly killed. But the Christians were different because instead of running in fear, they would bow and pray as they were getting killed and devoured by lions or torn apart by mules and things like that. For Perpetua, she started hanging out with people and she learned about Christ and she gave her life to Christ and she got baptized and she was fully, she fully devoted her life to Christ. Her own father told her, if you do not publicly renounce Jesus, you will be killed like the rest of the Christians. And she refused to do so up until her death. She died believing in Christ. And when she was publicly executed and killed for her beliefs as the daughter of a very high ranking Roman commander, the people in the crowd, all the other Romans and pagans went, wow, there's something to this. And then it continued to spread. And despite prosecution, <clears throat> Christianity is the only religion that thrived because of prosecution. If you look at Islam, it only thrived because it was forced by the sword. If you look at most religions, it only thrived because it was forced. You were forced to convert or, or that was it. Christianity was the only religion where we didn't pick up a sword. Right? Yep. Even even. The, the message that Jesus gave to Peter, like this is, I, I love the story of Peter. I'm just going to, I'm going to ramble off here for a second here. <laughs> I love the story of Peter because I, re- I I feel like I connect a lot with Peter's character, very impulsive, kind of like outspoken, loud, like that's, that's how he was. Peter, he was, 
Like he was taking, he, 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 Christ said, you will deny me before the, before the, the rooster crows. You will deny me three times, three times. And yes. he did. But then what happened? Jesus gets crucified. Peter sits there. I can only imagine he's sitting there somewhere. He's sad. His heart is torn apart because he denied his Lord and he knows his Lord is now dead. And then all of a sudden three days passes and this woman runs in and says, the Lord has risen. He has risen, right? Jesus, Peter sees Jesus for the first time since he was crucified. How, what, what, a, what a feeling that would be to know that, oh my goodness, he's back, you know? And then all of a sudden, what does Jesus say to Peter? Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes, Lord. And he says again, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. And then he says, Peter, do you love me? He says, you know my heart, Lord. I love you. And he says, feed my sheep. And that was all it took to change Peter into the the church, basically, at that point in time. Right. That's an amazing story. Uh-huh. It is. I, um, I want to read something, guys. Um, go ahead, Abbott. What you say? Go for it, brother. I, um, I, I'm sure y'all saw me wet my head down, and it's coming out of First John verses, uh, chapter two, and uh, God said, read John. So I, I, I don't know if somebody on here needs to hear it. Yes. Um, on here now or um maybe somebody will come back and and um watch it it needs to hear it but i'm gonna start at the verse of uh i'm gonna start at verse eight again a new commandment I write unto you which things is true in him and in you because the darkness is past and the light and the true light now shineth. He that says he is in the light and hated his brother is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abide in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hated his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goes because that darkness has blinded him, blinded him, blinded his eyes, excuse me. I write unto you little children because of your sins are forgiven your uh, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake I write unto you fathers because he have known him that is from the beginning I write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one I write unto you little children because ye have known the father I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known the Father that is from the beginning. And I write unto you, young men, because ye have, ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked ones. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth 
the will of God abided forever. Little children, it is not the last time. And as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For it, for if they have been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they may might be manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have the connection from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have written unto you because ye know not the truth. Wow. But because ye know it, and that's no lie, is the truth. Who is a liar, but he that denieth the, that he is... Oh, Lord, have mercy. Excuse me, y'all. Who is a liar, but he that denies that Jesus is Christ? He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same has not the Father, but he that acknowledge the Son has the Father also. Let, the, let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning, if that ye would have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall also continue in the Son and the Father. And this is the and this is the promise that he has promised us even eternal life. These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you, but the anointed which ye have received of him abide in you, and ye not and ye and ye not need any teaching of you, but as the same anointing teaches you in all things in the truth, and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. Thank you, Lord. And now, little church, abide in him, that when ye shall appear we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming if ye know that he is righteous he knows every little one that does righteousness is born of him i don't know why god wanted me to read that man i was i was over here and listening Somebody, Somebody here. Here. yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't. I, maybe, I think we right. all need to hear it. Yeah, maybe we, we all need to hear it. <laughs> all but, doctrine, all doctrine, is good. Exactly. And fine and reprove. <laughs> edification. I, I just thank God for it, man. And, Austin, and the big. I just wanted to point this. I got a package now, and I threw a thing of my jigs in there too, just because I was late and forgot about you. But I don't want to show his address, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll show my address. I ain't afraid. I said I ain't afraid. You know, y'all come here, you better be ready. Because <laughs> I said those are just the decorations. When I got laid next to my bed, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hey, he's not lying, guys. He tell y'all to. Yeah, I'll y'all I'm still right now. Go. Go I got there. one right, right here. Come hey. to my door. I dare you. <laughs> I can come to your house and not be worried about being shot because I know where I'm going. Well, if you come to my house, I'm just gonna invite you in. We're gonna have a steak and we're gonna read some Bible and go fishing. And <laughs> <laughs> have you ever, guys? You guys ever see the thing where? Uh, you have the the first the five books of the of the Old Testament, how it spells Torah and Torah backwards. You ever yep. see that? Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. fascinating. I did actually. You want to know the most? You haven't heard that, Eric? 
I never heard that, sir. Thank you, you for do that. Me, I'm going to show you guys something absolutely crazy. All right. I'll tell Eric. So if you take the um, – <clears throat> If you take the so you have uh, uh, Genesis, Exodus, mm -hmm. Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers, right? If you take um, uh, Genesis and Exodus, and you take every forty-nine letters, it spells Torah, T-O-R-A-H. And if you cool. go to Leviticus, yeah, so you go to Leviticus, you skip over Leviticus, so you got those two books are pointing that way. You you have. Leviticus, and then you have Deuteronomy and and Numbers. Every fifty letters in those, I believe it's fifty, spells Torah backwards. The first two books point this way. The next two books point that way. In the middle has Leviticus, and in Leviticus, every forty nine letters spells Yahweh. So you have the laws are pointing towards Leviticus, which tells you, which spells out God Jesus, or God's name, what Yahweh, in in Hebrew. Like I said on Bible study, aka first, says every day you're learning something. Every day, you're learning so much, something. there's so much to that book, and I mean, for people to just it, it, like in, in the secular ideology of like, oh, it's it's like, just like a book like Harry Potter. No, there's no way. There's no way. In fact, if you even look at uh, numbers, which is about numbers, <laughs> why would that be in a story? It doesn't make sense to put. Uh, things that would literally be like uh, uh, a way of tracking people and counting people. Like it, it's it's historical documentation is what it is, right? It, yeah. it's, it's right in a story that so and so was the son of so and so, and this there's this many people of this tribe, and they had this land, and this was their territory. It doesn't make sense to put that in unless it's actual record keeping. It's historical. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, exactly right. I, I um, I like that. I like that a lot. We have a saying at our Bible study uh, for our youth: uh, the Bible is just not a book of words; it's a lifestyle. And to uh, yeah. to continue to hear uh, this knowledge, man, and 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 how is is I don't want to say amazed, but it's. It's not a maze because it's not. It's, it's it's something to where it's educational, man. If you right. look at it's it, and it's edification. It's, yeah, it's revealing yeah. too. It's so revealing. Yes, it's reflective. The Bible's a mirror. If oh, you don't see yourself. Bible, that, that Bible is something else. Oh, it's a well. If you don't see yourself in what you're reading, you're not looking at it hard enough. You cannot read the Bible as if you're just reading a story. You have no. to read the Bible as if it is a reflection. If you look at, look at, read the Old Testament, read, up, read the entire Bible, but especially the Old Testament, and you will realize that we are no different today than what they were then. All we've done is we switched out stone tablets for electrical tablets, but we're right. the same sinful creatures with the same habits as we've always been. Mm hmm. Now, when. The, in the Old back. Testament, it, here's something to, uh, for people to ponder. When you look at the Old Testament, there's the God of Moloch and Baal, right? Sometimes they're, they're cross-referenced. What was one of the things, the detestable things that they did when they worshipped Baal was sacrifice, child sacrifice. Right. They got new parents to take their firstborn child and sacrifice it at the altar of Baal. And when they would do so, they would pound drums, right? And 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 that the drums were basically so you couldn't hear the screaming cries of the baby being roasted over a fire on a in the hands of a, a brass statue. <clears throat> what what did they promise those new parents? What was the promise from their god Baal for the new parents for sacrificing their firstborn child? Do you know what the promise was? financial and social prosperity. Now, what do we tell people about abortions? When we, before the child has a voice to cry, we're killing children for the same promise of financial and social prosperity. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We have not changed. We talked about it earlier. There's nothing new under the sun. Satan just keeps no. read. As I said, look at the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. 
What is he? He declares you bow down and worship it or die. What does the yeah. Antichrist do? Puts up an image and you yeah. have to bow down and worship it or die. Yeah. It's nothing new. Satan's been doing the same thing. <laughs> He's continuously tried from the beginning of time, from the first Tower of Babel, yeah. All the way up till now, he's tried to start a world empire. Well, but it has it has not worked until God. Bless look him. at, <laughs> I mean, since it's all about speaking the truth, I mean, the truth offends some people, anyways. But the, but the, it's just a matter of fact. If you look at look at Islam, for instance, so you're telling me the eyewitnesses and the people who literally were crucified for what they seen. And they wrote testimonies about it, eyewitness statements. We're not to believe those, but we're to believe a prophet that came 630 years after Christ was crucified and resurrected. And he has a revolution of what's got what's happening, right? And and he creates a new rule law. Meanwhile, let's not forget who who Muhammad was. Deep we, down we, inside, he was he was a pervert. He was a child molesting, slave right. training warlord. Exactly. That's what he was. And so all of a sudden, this guy has a revelation of, of, of what it is to be saved, what it is to be within God's presence, and so on and so forth. And the first thing he does, he, he tries to diminish Jesus' role from the Son of God, God incarnate, to a prophet. Once they do that, then they take away the power of who Jesus was. And then they force the religion via the sword. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. So I, I've been studying the Quran a fair bit because I, I, I feel that. As a Christian, you should know the opposition of your right. faith and the ones that are, you know, the, the most uh, detrimental mm -hmm. to, to, to the belief and the one that's leading people astray. So this is where it gets fascinating. So in the in Revelations, they talk about the four horsemen of the apocalypse, right? Now, I'm not saying I'm, I'm proving anything here. I'm just saying this is a, this just raises the eyebrow. It gives you something to think about. You have the four horsemen of the apocalypse. What color are they? There's the white horse. There's the red horse. There's the black horse and the pale horse, which is the Greek word for the pale. It actually translates to green, light green. It's actually the yeah. same word they use to explain the grass that the people sat on when Jesus was doing his um, um What is the color of the green sermon. stand for? When you all think of when you're getting sick or something like that? You get a green face, yeah. a pukey face. Now, <laughs> I could get into a whole bunch on that. <laughs> here's really interesting. So we have the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Just give me a second here. I gotta, I gotta. JB, you can even bring up the baby's diaper too. <laughs> here. So the four horsemen of the apocalypse is. <sighs> The pale, pale horse is green. There's black, red, and white. Here are all the surrounding countries, Islamic countries around Israel. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's yeah, that one I definitely. That's, that's an eyebrow bra razor, isn't Lebanon's it? Lebanon's got the pine tree in it too. And if you read about <laughs> Judgment Day in Islam, if you read about the judgment in the Quran, it is identical to the to the the. Uh, uh, the Christian um, revelation of the Antichrist, basically. Mm -hmm. Look up, look up what what their their judgment day is. Their judgment day is our Antichrist. Exactly. Just, just They're cross, waiting cross for an Antichrist. It's, it's absolutely mind boggling how similar the the the, the, the coming of the Antichrist and their uh, judgment day. Is identical, except ours don't stop there. Ours continues on. And uh, I hate to tell them all that, but Allah is just an old recycled god. He's a moon god. He was recycled yeah. from mm -hmm. Babylon, actually, as the moon. People god. say that Allah, <laughs> when they say like, because when they say um, God is great, when they say Allah Akbar, they don't. They're not saying God is great. They're saying it. That's a that's a very direct translation. What is meant is our God is greater. Yeah. Even though he's much smaller. Much he's cap he's lowercase G. That's just uh, stuff to, to ponder. 
<laughs> what? Say what again? About the Allah? About the about the God being great? Because I've always said our God is great. You know, so no, we saying- say uh, so when they say that, when the when Arabics or or Islamic uh, believers when they say Allah Akbar, which is spelled, they say it means God is great, but really the meaning is our God is greater. That's the, what that's what they're proclaiming. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. They're proclaiming. So they they like to say that we believe in Jesus, but no, you don't. You you believe in a idolatry version of God, and you believe in a version of Jesus, which is an idolatry in itself. You don't Maybe believe in Jesus. The Quran, right. you, the Quran says Jesus is a prophet. Paul so said, <laughs> right. It, anybody it who Jesus is any other Christ than the one we have preached, they're a liar. But here, here's here's where it gets really interesting. You have Islam saying Jesus is a prophet and Jesus will come back to judge. But however, their book also says that only God can judge, but Jesus is not God. So it contradicts itself right then and there. Nonetheless, Islam points at Jesus. You have Hindu. Hinduism actually points towards the deity of Jesus as being a way of life, a way of living, his teachings. The Buddhists actually believe that Jesus was an incarnation of the Buddha. So you have all these religions, these world religions, pointing at Jesus. But then Jesus, when you go to the source, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm wearing it. He, he points to it. <laughs> right. He's, he's pointing to himself. Baby. So why, why would I go to any of these other religions on the outside who are pointing at the center when the guy in the center is pointing at himself? Just go yeah. to the source. Exactly. Why would I bother wasting my time with the other false ones that are just trying to piggyback on his deity? I witnessed to a guy the other day that believed the Quran, and I asked him one question he could not answer. How was Jesus conceived through a virgin mother without a man's seed? Right. He could not answer it. We all. All they could say is it was a miracle. That's <laughs> the only thing he could come up also, with. It was a miracle, but he could not answer that question. I've had conversations with that God uh, spoke and we came to existence. Says, God can speak into existence, but if you're going to have a baby conceived into a womb, you need more than just words. They uh, They... What I find interesting is like they'll say that no, God is one, and that they 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 have this misconception that we think that Jesus is a separate deity completely from God. They don't understand that Jesus is also God. They 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 can't wrap their mind around it. So they'll say that no, God is only one. There's only one. There's only one. Okay, well then fine. Let's go back to what JV said. Doesn't it say that we are made in God's image? Are you not exactly. a mind, body, and spirit? Are you not? Are you not a? You know, don't you have a soul? Don't you have a spirit? Don't you have a body? We are made in God's image. So, why would you have all these things and God just be one? Exactly. It doesn't. It son. doesn't make sense. That's why God. Satan copies him when he right. comes in a time. Everything he, right. has, everything he does is he, a counterfeit. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show show you something real quick. I love this. It's from John 19, verse 19, when Pilate writes on the thing above Jesus' head, what is he say? He says, Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many the Jews. For the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Now, I want to explain one thing. They were not mad that he wrote it. I mean, they were mad that he said, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Right. The Pharisees were upset about that. But they were mad for a whole different reason. And I'm going to show you why. You gotta remember, we read from life left to right. Hebrew is re- written read from right to left. So yeah. we read it, it is Jesus. And this is how it goes 
So we would read it in Hebrew this way. Yahshua, Hanazare, Malak, Ve, Hele, Hudim. That's how it's said in, and that is Jesus, the Nazarene, the king, and that V is of the Jews. So that's how it translates into English from Hebrew. So Yahshua, Hanazare, Malak, Ve, Hey, hey, who dim? I always get that one mixed up, but hey, who dim? Now, why were they so mad at this? Yeah, they're mad that he called Jesus the king of the Jews, or whatever. But when you read that backwards, what's the first letter? Y. What's the next first letter? H. H. What's the next first letter? It's an M, but it mixes with the V, so it becomes a W. And what's the last one? Yahweh. Pilate Yahweh. called Jesus God when he hung him on the cross. And the Jews saw that. And they were furious. Because Yahweh wow. Pretty cool. is the Hebrew word for Jehovah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that's why they were so mad. And he did it on purpose. Again, Pilate's one of those I think we're going to see in heaven that will surprise many. Just like Nebuchadnezzar. I'm pretty sure we're going to see him in heaven. That's going to surprise so? a lot of people. Oh, I'm pretty sure of it. Because right here, that just tells me that Pilate knew who Jesus was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to know if, if we're, we're going to see Samson. told him that about the dream she had about this about Jesus. Yeah. yeah. A lot of a lot of people have wisdom, but not everyone knows how to apply it. And a good example of that is Solomon. Oh, yeah. Look at Solomon. He was so full of wisdom mm -hmm. and he still screwed it up. That's because he let the lust of his flesh get the better of him. Look at Job. Job well Job did just right. I mean, he didn't do it just right, but he did it right. <laughs> if you get what I'm saying, he's a man in, of integrity towards God. Yeah, that's why he's in the Hall of Faith. <laughs> oh. That's what they call that book hey, of Romans. That one where he Moses, lists all the people. Moses was there. the same way, but Moses went into a great calling. God. Who's all in the Hall of Faith? Let's see. It's Abraham, Moses, Job, Daniel. Elijah. Yeah, Elijah. I can't remember. I'd have to go back and read it. But yeah, there's a Hall of Faith in, in Romans. I think Ezekiel was one of them, too. No. Who? All right. I'll cheat. And Who? <laughs> here's, a, here's an interesting thing. Who was known as the disciples of disciple or the disciple of disciples? John. John. Nope. Oh, it's in Hebrews. I was wrong. The disciple of disciples was Mary Magdalene. And the reason for that, so Mary, three days after Christ was crucified, she went to the um, temple to anoint his body, to get him for for. For burial, right? Like the he was he was laid to rest. She goes back. They anoint yeah, the body. They do the things the, that they uh, did. The anointing. She ima imagine now how how like this is her lord. She's followed him. Mary Magdalene came from the place of of Magdalena, Magdalena, whatever it's called. And she was very. Her family was more than likely because of that was very profitable. She had a she had good money and stuff. But Jesus delivered her and she said, Well, with my life now, I will devote it to you. So she devoted her life to Jesus. And she learned and she followed and she she discipled with him. And then now they hit her Lord is dead. She dies. Now put yourself in her shoes. She stayed by that cross. She witnessed him die. She seen him give mm -hmm. up his spirit. And then three days later, she says, I gotta go take care of his body. So she goes to the tomb. How heart wrenching it is, and then she gets to the tomb to do the deed that she, she I'm sure was he very heavy on her, and she sees the stone rolled away. And what did she say? 
Where have they taken my... They have taken my lord. Her heart was just crushed. Oh, yeah. And, but what did Jesus do? He had an angel sitting there waiting for her to give her comfort and said, woman, do not, do not. He has risen. And then she's like, oh, my goodness. She leaves and Jesus reveals herself to her, not through visual, because she thought he was just a gardener. He says, Mary, through his voice, the sheep, the sheep knows the voice of the shepherd. And she exactly. said, Jesus, Jesus. And she, 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 just imagine, she, she fell down to her knees and she, she, in love. And then she, at that moment, was the only person on planet Earth who knew Jesus rose for the dead. And her job was to go and tell the rest of the disciples. So for a short time, Mary Magdalene was the church. She was the disciple of the disciples. And she runs over and says, he has risen. Now, Jewish law, a woman's woman's word meant nothing. So when she gets there, the first thing Peter does is take other men and run to there because they need eyewitnesses. Right. That's the way the law worked. And they booted it to go to go to go see Jesus. But for a short amount of time, Mary Magdalene was the church. She was the one disciple that had the disciple to the disciples, and she had the good news. She was the only one carrying the gospel that he has risen. And that's that's fascinating. That's amazing to me. Here's a little trivia for everybody. Who are the two people in the Bible that God says he loved? Not friend. Said he loved. Who Jesus? God and Jesus. Yeah. Jesus says it once. Yeah, like, God well, says while it he once. was here as Christ. Yeah. Jesus says it uh, once, and God says it once. He to only two people that he I believe loved. one was Peter. Abraham. It's not Peter. Abraham was friend. Abraham was just a friend. Because he did say it was one of the disciples, because I remember he said the one that Jesus loved. Yep, that was John. John was a disciple. Okay. This is this is why I like pointing this out. It was Daniel, and it was John. Who did he give the end time prophecies to? The two people here. John. In the Old Testament, yeah. he gave it to Daniel, and in the New Testament, he gave it to John. The two people he thought he could trust the most. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little Good thing he didn't say keep it a secret, huh? Because it's all right there. <laughs> well, he gave to Daniel. He gave to Daniel. He told him to put it in the and throw it the river. He said they're not ready yeah. for it yet. Jim, Pilate <laughs> knew who Jesus was because his wife, God, God gave his wife a dream of who Jesus was and what was going to happen. And she told her husband about it. That's why That's he why took no responsibility for it. That's why he washed his hands of it. Says, I washed my hands of this. You guys that was wrong. The Hall of Faith is not in Romans for some reason. I get I always get Hebrews and Romans mixed up. I don't because they're probably two of the most important books in the New Testament. <laughs> I was getting mixed up. The Hall of Faith is in Hebrews chapter 11. If you ever want to know who's in the Hall of Faith, go read Hebrews chapter 11. I forgot Ooh. a few names, but I got most of them. <laughs> hey, Baba. Hey, Baba. Such a hard working woman. Ba, 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 ba. Don't get me started with the babas again. <laughs> you got me started on the babas. <laughs> Hebrews no. chapter eleven, correct? Yep, Hebrews chapter eleven. That's and the name of it is uh, what? What again? It's called the Hall of Faith. That's if you look it up in theology, it's called the Hall of Faith. I um, I, I one thing I started doing to really give myself some insight on. The, the, the scripture and everything else is I started learning about individuals uh, and the first individual I was actually, I felt like I need, I wanted to learn was uh, Judas. Oh yeah. And He's an interesting, because, definitely an interesting guy. <laughs> because I think that if we all stop and realize that we are all very close to being Judas, we all have been a Judas yeah. because so we what did Judas what did Judas do? He traded God. He traded the Lord, his grace, his mercy, all of it, for 30 pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. How many of us yep. have traded God and his glory and his love and his compassion for a moment of lust or a moment, something way less 
valuable than 30 pieces of silver. Drunkenness or yeah. Drunkenness, whatever. Like we trade Christ daily for things that are less valuable than 30 pieces of silver. We are we're, we have to see ourselves in Judas. But learning about the character of Judas and how when he was in charge of all the finances and things like this, um, he was tempted. He said, oh, let's take a little bit of that, put in my pocket. Let's take a little bit of that, put in my pocket. And that sinful greed, that greed grew into him to the point where he could go, you know what? I'm not going to just upright betray him, but I'm going to go talk to these guys and see what they'll offer me. And then he says, well, I'm not going to just, you know, I, I do like the guy. He, I've been hanging out with him for a while. So I'm just going to give him a kiss on the cheek. And then you'll know. I'll play both sides of the aisle here a little bit. He does it. And then they, they, they take him. And then he realizes, oh, my goodness, they're not just going to flog him and release him. They're going to kill him. And then you have to watch him be killed and crucified and know that you were the one to do it. And then you take that silver and you go back and you say, I don't want it. You can't undo what you've done. There's no way you can undo what you've done now. So you throw the silver back, and instead of repenting, and instead of saying, look what I did, I'm sorry, Lord, instead he hid in shame, and he allowed that shame to combine with his greed until he took his own life because he could not face himself for what he did, and he had too much pride to ask for forgiveness and to repent. And He's very much like a lot of us. Judas is one of those I don't think we'll see in heaven. One, the Bible says, every man, every man that hangeth from a tree is cursed. And what did he do? Yeah. He purposely he hung himself from a tree to curse himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he knew he was cursed. He knew it. Yeah. Um, the study of the 30 pieces of silver is great. You go back and read Hosea. It's all in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's already <laughs> written in the Bible. Um, but... The funny thing is, and then, I mean, and that's then, crazy because even Isaiah, they took inflation and everything, and they, like they knew. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but uh, that whole what they did with the thirty pieces of silver is went and bought Potter's Field. Cool. Yeah. Well, there's some homework for people. We're way over time, so I'm not going to get into all that. <laughs> couldn't put it into the treasure. Put it people. into the treasure. They couldn't <laughs> put it back into the temple into the treasure because it was blood money. Yep. So they went. Yeah, and bought and what the ended Holy up happening with going, that field later on is... <laughs> JB, I'm just letting the Holy Spirit lead this tonight. <laughs> but I actually have to go record here in a little bit, so... Yeah, that is true. Here. Yeah, I got three more Bible studies to record before I go to bed. Okay. <laughs> I totally have enjoyed it, man. I, I'm very <laughs> thankful for all of this. I, oh, um, thanks for having me up. Yeah. Hey, you want hey, you want to welcome to come back up. We'll be doing this more often. Yeah, if I can catch you guys, I definitely, I definitely will. I, I really enjoyed it. I love that. Uh, next Sunday, it will be me and JB trying to finish off the book of Job. <laughs> We're doing it fast style, not like how me and Eric did it. Me and Eric, we took like chapter. Hey, <laughs> we did it pretty fast last week. Me and we average, we're we're, we're, we're but... booking through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could definitely say it wasn't like me and JV did it, man. Uh, I, I've been in the background listening to y'all, man. So uh, <laughs> Next, next week will be the uh, third part of Job. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully finishing it. It's yeah, hard man. for me, though, because when we get to the part where God talks, it's hard that's for me to speed through that because I have so much to say about it. <laughs> hey, that's going to that's be fire because when God talks... Boy, that's going to turn everybody's feet around. I love it when I point out to people where Job, like, he Job admitted his sin and sense. didn't know he admitted his sin. I love it no, when I get to that part and point that out. And people are like, oh, yeah, he did just admit his sin, didn't he? And he doesn't even know he did. Yeah. <laughs> and then God points it out at the end. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then Job has to go back and look at his own words and be like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and I, I feel like that's another reason why I've, I've learned you got to be careful what you say out your mouth. Exactly. Again, that's why God gave you two ears and one mouth. I think that's uh, Job is where they first say the fear of the Lord is true wisdom. Right. Yep. That's the first spot. Yeah. First book. First book ever written. 
It came out right away. All right, who wants yeah, to Yeah, I love it. I'll pray this out when everybody's ready. All right, because, yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly. We come to you with a thankful heart. We come to you praising you tonight for this fellowship. We praise you for Tammy's healing. We praise you for Marana, that you're healing her heart. You're yes, healing her lungs. You're making her whole. Father, we praise you that you're touching your children. Father, we praise you that you're with Catfish Dog. You're comforting, comforting him and his family yes, through this uh, trying times that he's going through. Father, I thank you that you're with each and every one of us tonight, both on panel and in chat, that you're leading us and guiding us. Father, we're, we're thank you that you are ministering to those that are maybe watching that are not saved, that we are planting the seed that can be watered and that can be harvested by someone. Father, we thank you for everything that you do in our lives. Bless us. Be with us, lead us, and guide us. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you, you all, everybody who's still here. Jaxi. We should have six people in here. Stuart. Baba's still here. Thank you all, man. Thank you. you. All Baba. on. Baba's been in here the whole time she's at work. That's my mom. <laughs> yes, Lord. Guys, I love y'all, man. <clears throat> I thank you. Ready for the next one, brother. Yeah. Just remember, everybody, uh, pray in all situations, yes. no matter whether it's good, bad, angry, mad, whatever. Pray and give Always him thanks. Thank God. And praise God in everything you do. Thank God. In the mountaintops and in the valleys, thank him. Thank you. Thank Never you. forget to thank him. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Love y'all. Love you. Love you. Don't forget Thanks to pray, God. Me. Peace. Peace. As JB says, Genesis good night, everybody. God bless. Peace. <laughs> Peace.